The gray multi-story building rose majestically against the cloudy sky. In a school class, while classmates walked around the classroom among the gray desks, the main character was sleeping, bending over his desk. His fingers dug his nails into the tabletop, leaving scratches there. He raised his head sharply, furiously hit the desk with his fist, and shouted that the emperor was a rude man. The main character, a dark-haired guy with blue eyes, was dressed in a school uniform. His face was twisted with rage, his lips turned white. His classmates turned in his direction and, pointing their fingers at him, laughed merrily. They were all dressed in gray school uniforms with a logo on the chest. The main character looked ahead in bewilderment. He heard laughter and became excited. One of the students, a dark-haired guy, mockingly said that this idiot was daydreaming again. Another student laughed and said that he was trying to write a love letter to Lion Lian. He wants to get a beautiful girl. The main character looked around and saw that he was in the classroom. Looking at the school board, he realized that this was a high school. This was when he was in high school. His classmates were still laughing and looking at him. The main character was surprised to realize that he was reborn again, back when he was in his second year of high school. He looked at the clock that hung above the school board. The time was 12 o'clock written on them. He realized that it was noon on the 3rd of April. The main character was shocked to realize that today a phenomenon would happen that would change the world. He stood up decisively from his desk. His classmates looked at him in surprise. The main character thought that in less than three hours. A woman's voice interrupted his thoughts. A girl with dark hair pulled back into a ponytail ordered him to stop. The main character turned his head in her direction and looked in bewilderment. She held a folded piece of paper in her hand. She threw it at the protagonist's feet. The dark-haired classmate mockingly told Zhu Han to look at himself. He is poor. He has nothing to be proud of. Lian Lian asked, did he dare to write a love letter to her? Does he think he deserves her? Lian Lian looked at him arrogantly, pointing her finger contemptuously. Zhu Han asked in surprise, is it a love letter? He remembered Pan Lian Lian's boyfriend, whose name was Zyman Kin. They set up a case with a fake love letter. Then they used this to blackmail him for two years. Zhu Han pointed his finger at her mockingly and advised Pan Lian Lian to look at herself first. She stared at him in shock. Zhu Han said that she was like a stinking fox. He asked mockingly, does he love her? Is she laughing at him? A dark-haired classmate laughed and asked, is he awake? Zhu Han dared to talk to Pan Lian Lian like this. Is it really him? Standing next to him was another student who replied, they will see what her boyfriend says when he arrives. Pan Lian Lian was shaking all over with indignation. She pointed her finger at him and asked, dumbfounded, what was he saying? At this time, the door to the classroom opened and footsteps were heard. A self-confident, tall, broad-shouldered, dark-haired guy in a school uniform appeared on the threshold with his hands in his trouser pockets. Pan Lian Lian turned her head in his direction when she realized that it was him, threw herself into his arms, pressed her head to her chest, and through her tears told him to hurry up and help her teach Zhu Han a lesson. Pan Lian Lian said in despair that he dared to call her a stinking fox. Zyman Kin, flexing his fists, said smugly that he dared to call his girlfriend a stinking fox. This won't end today. Zhu Han will regret this. Zyman Kin approached him. He towered significantly over Zhu Han as he surpassed him in height and physique. Zyman Kin said that he would give him a chance. My classmates watched all this, smiling maliciously. He continued that Zhu Han must obey his orders. If he does this, Zyman Kin will consider forgiving him. Zhu Han replied angrily, looking up at him, that he was an idiot. Zyman Kin fiercely grabbed his shirt and asked angrily, does he know who he is talking to? Zhu Han jumped up and angrily kicked him in the face. He, not expecting the blow, flew to the side, rolling his eyes. Zhu Han looked at his defeated classmates smugly. Zyman Kin fell onto the desk with a bang, breaking it and falling to the floor. His eyes rolled upward, becoming completely white, and foam appeared at the mouth. Zhu Han, towering over him, said smugly that he talks too much. After these words, Zhu Han headed towards the exit. His classmates looked after him in shock. The dark-haired guy asked in surprise, How is this possible? Zyman Kin was defeated by him. Pan Lian Lian looked after him with eyes full of tears from resentment and disappointment. A single tear ran down her cheek. A classmate with dark hair asked the question, had his eyes deceived him? Zhu Han is strong, very strong. Next to him stood another dark-haired guy who stammered and admitted that Zhu Han was too fierce and cruel. After some time, loud footsteps were heard. It was Zhu Han who walked down the school corridor and thought that he was a weakling in his previous life, 
Now he will be invulnerable. He remembered many dragons and magical creatures, gods and goddesses, and said that he was still weak and poor. He clenched his fist and resolutely thought that the earth would change its aura and the world would soon change. He mentally imagined a dark funnel forming in the sky over a large city with beautiful buildings. Zuhan decided that he should take advantage of the opportunity and seize resources and become as strong as possible. He remembered the demonic creatures and dark nights and said that the enemies of his past life, he was waiting for them. He will rule the world no matter what. He will destroy everyone. With these thoughts, Zuhan quickly ran down the school corridor and then through the schoolyard. As he ran through the schoolyard, someone was watching him from above. The hand made a ring from the index finger and thumb. When Zuhan was visually inside it, someone said his name. A dark-haired girl in a school uniform stood on the roof and watched him. She said it was interesting. The class leader named Lu Yunzi said with a smile that there was such a strong student in her class. She asked in surprise, how did she not find it earlier? Zhu Han walked outside the school, took out his cell phone, and dialed a number. Looking at the number on the phone screen, he thought affirmatively that this was the number he remembered best, when a voice came from the cell phone and said, Hi. He got excited and pressed it to his chest. With a shaking hand, he raised the phone to his ear and stammered, Lao Er, at the same time. Kingbei High School Library A dark-haired girl was sitting at a table in front of a large window. A computer screen was visible behind her, and a pile of books lay next to her. She held a silver cell phone near her ear and asked in surprise, Who is it? How does he know her name? Zuhan said excitedly that he had important information. He hesitated a little and added that this might sound stupid. Lao Er looked in surprise at the screen of her phone, where an unfamiliar number was written. Zhu Han was born from the phone and told her to trust him, he would never harm her. He looked at his hand, where his wristwatch was, and quickly walked forward. Zhu Han said that in less than two hours, there will be a huge change in this world. At this time, the world will expand a hundred times. She must leave the school immediately and go to the nearest mountain. Let him wait for the end of the first phase of Reiki restoration. Lao Er was silent, puzzled. Zhu Han excitedly told her to trust him, he would never deceive her. After finishing the phone conversation, he thought that Lao Er was a very good person. Zhu Han looked at the screen of the phone that went dark and said that in his previous life, if it weren't for her, he would have died during the first phase of recovery. He remembered the dark-haired girl who extended a helping hand to him when he lay wounded in the back on the ground. She showed him the path to cultivation, but could not follow him to the end. She died saving him. Zhu Han hid the phone in the inner pocket of his jacket and quickly walked forward, thinking that Lao Er would be waiting for him. He resolutely thought that he would not let her suffer in this world. At this time, Lao Er held the phone to her chest and asked in surprise, Who is this person? Big changes. She looked out the window and mentally asked, Expansion. What did he mean? Lao Er placed her palm on her chest in the area of her heart and thought when she heard his voice, she felt that he was a good person. She looked at her phone screen and wondered if she could trust him. Lao Er stood up and walked down the corridor, thinking that Kibiagyuan Mountain was an hour away from here. She must go there. After some time, the moped's wheels began to spin sharply. Zhu Han rode a dark gray moped along the city's multi-lane road and thought, if he remembers correctly, the most intense awakening was at the edge of Hanshan City Park. This is an ancient structure at the foot of the mountain. There, he could find the Nine Leaf Lotus, then upgrade Zhu Zion's qualifications. After some time, the traffic light turned red. Zhu Han, without noticing this, crossed the road at high speed. He thought that in his previous life, he missed the opportunity to take possession of the Seven Treasures, which he greatly regrets. What exactly, he cannot remember. The traffic light was still red. He remembered that at that moment, he was an ordinary person who did not have the qualifications to cultivate immortality. He only remembers that later many pillars of light appeared, and therefore, countless monks died. Zhu Han remembered those pictures that could be seen on the internet, in which there were huge blue pillars reaching to the sky among the mountains. He was brought out of his thoughts by the voice of an old man with a stick in his hands, who angrily shouted that he should not cross the road when it was red, over time. The tops of ancient tall buildings could be seen among the numerous green trees. A wavy stripe of purple appeared in the blue sky. Men's feet walked quickly along the gray stone steps. On a green lawn among the trees, in front of an ancient building, there was a group of people who invited Lyo Dashau to stay here. They do not know whether the girl will succeed. Someone replied that he must have won. 
He said this girl is pretty good. The man climbed to the very last step of the high staircase and found himself on the lawn. Zhu Han happily thought that he had finally arrived. A dark-haired man in a green jacket stood on the porch of an ancient building. There were four more men on the grass in front of him. One of them said that someone is coming. Zhu Han was approaching them across the grass. When he was already standing nearby, a guy with a mohawk on his head announced that Hanshin Park was closed to visitors today. Zhu Han said that as far as he knows, Hanshin Park is a public place. Zhu Han asked, who is Lyo Dashao? A guy with a mohawk on his head grabbed him by the chest and asked if he didn't know. Lyo Dashao is the richest man in the area. He asked irritably, Zhu Han dares to interfere in his affairs. Zhu Han looked at him angrily and told him to remove his hand if he still wanted to live. He added that he should do it quickly. Zhu Han grabbed his hand with lightning speed. The guy with the mohawk looked at him in surprise. Before he knew it, Zhu Han twisted his arm behind his back and lowered him to his knees in the grass. The guy with the mohawk on his head screamed heart-rendingly in pain, his hand. Another guy with blonde hair looked at what was happening, dumbfounded. A guy with blue hair, wearing a gray jacket, ordered him to be killed. He and his assistants rushed towards Zhu Han. He glared at them angrily and smiled smugly, thinking that even if his body is not strong now, he still remembers the best techniques from his past life. Zhu Han grabbed one of the guys by the hair with his hand and forcefully slammed his head onto the ground. A guy with blue hair and a gray jacket stopped in shock. Zhu Han looked back at him and thought that this was enough to beat up weaklings like them. He kicked the guy with blue hair in the face with all his might, blood spraying from his mouth. When all the opponents were defeated, Zhu Han walked up to the high wooden gate and thought that they were all lucky. If he had his power, they would be dead. Behind him, the defeated boys lay motionless on the grass. After some time, a glowing dark purple funnel began to form above the mountain. Zhu Han stood at the foot of a picturesque mountain and watched water flow over the rocks like a waterfall. Near the mountain, there were trees that were covered with green, yellow, and orange leaves. Zhu Han stood in front of a high mountain and thought that this was the right place. The nine leaf lotus must be somewhere on these stones. He remembered how at this point in his past life, he was still unable to cultivate and tirelessly search the internet for information about this medicine. It took so long. Zhu Han looked at the cell phone screen that showed the time. It was almost three o'clock in the afternoon. He realized that there were less than ten minutes left. Footsteps were heard behind him and many men were approaching him. He looked around and asked in surprise what? In front of him stood a fair-haired guy in a black jacket with golden stars painted on it. A purple scarf hung around his neck. He angrily ordered them to let him see who it was. The fair-haired guy in the black jacket with stars said angrily, Zhu Han dared to offend him and let him not think that he could escape. Men stood behind him. Lion Shu asked angrily, is he an idiot? He actually dared to provoke him. Lion Shu irritably twirled his finger at his temple. Zhu Han looked at him calmly and thought that it turns out that this arrogant boy is Lion Shu. He remembered hearing about this man in his previous life. The Nine Leaf Lotus was originally discovered by him. Lion Shu touched Zhu Han's chest with his index finger and asked displeasedly, was it not he who found out about him? Zhu Han listened to him silently without delving into the meaning of the words he said. Lion Shu became nervous as he waited for an answer. Zhu Han took his chin with his fingers, turned his head right and left, examining him carefully. He remembered that Lion Shu had become a famous cultivator in this city. He dealt with a huge fire-breathing dragon. Lion Shu has repeatedly saved people from demonic monsters. But when the city got into conflict with another city, he fought a foreign cultivator and sacrificed himself for the good of the city. At that time, many people mourned his death. Zhu Han wrapped one hand around his waist and grabbed his chin with the other and asked in surprise, is he really Lion Shu? Or is he just pretending? Lion Shu and his guards looked at him in puzzlement, their mouths wide open. Zhu Han thought that he did not look like a hero. Lion Shu asked irritably, is he laughing at him? How can he talk to him like that? The dark-haired guy said angrily that Zhu Han had just insulted him. He helpfully asked Mr. Lion, should they kill him? Lion Shu thought about it. Zhu Han looked at the cell phone screen. The clock showed 3 p.m. At this time, golden energy rings formed around the mountain. The mountain lit up and shook. Many bright lightning bolts struck the ground from the sky. The sky became dark. The mountain shook. Stones fell from above and noisily, with a splash, plunged into the mountain lake into which the waterfall flowed. 
The mountain shook violently, and huge boulders fell noisily, destroying ancient buildings. When pillars of blue light rose from the ground, Lion Shoe's guards pointed at it in shock and shouted, Look! They ran away in horror. Glowing balls were floating in the air. The guards looked at this in surprise. One of his guards shouted for Lion Shoe to hurry up. The other guard, without turning around, frightenedly shouted for everyone to run away. Lion Shu looked in shock, not moving a single step. Zhu Han stood fearlessly in front of the waterfall into which the boulders were falling. He was in no hurry to leave. There were small glowing balls floating in the air around him. Lion Shu looked at what was happening in shock. Zhu Han looked at the aura that enveloped his body with a blue glow. He touched it with his hand and thought that the restoration of the aura had finally begun. The first phase of recovery will take approximately half a month. During this period, the earth will be swallowed up by house, and an incredible number of people will die. At the same time, the earth's aura will increase radically. He remembered how a magical glow emanated from the ground, and tiny balls of fire rose up, destroying huge multi-story buildings. Zhu Han thought that a lucky couple would awaken their cultivation. There will be a variety of medicines available in some places, and some will have a chance to get their hands on it. Lion Shu asked a question in fear. Is he an idiot? He firmly grabbed the wrist of Zhu Han, who walked forward with confident steps. Lion Shu exclaimed with excitement and undisguised fear that it was dangerous here. They need to get out of here. Zhu Han looked forward without expressing any emotion. With a confident movement, he pulled his hand away from Lion Shu's grasp. Lion Shu's hand moved away from Zhu Han's wrist with great speed and a barely noticeable rustle. In a matter of seconds, Zhu Han began jumping on huge rocks protruding from the river. Water flowed from the top of the mountain in a huge stream, spreading across the transparent surface of the lake. The waves coming from the waterfalls crashed into the protruding rocks. The water, continuing to flow from the top of the mountain, shone beautifully due to the reflection of the sun's rays. Zhu Han jumped over to the next stone, standing confidently on this one. Lion Shu fearfully reached out his hand to him, trying to stop him. Zhu Han clung to the mountainside with confident movements, beginning to climb to the top. His body was still shaking from intense tension, but he continued to move forward. Lion Shu watched this in shock and exclaimed the question, What? He froze in place as he watched Zhu Han rise up. The water below shone brightly, reflecting the rays of the sun. Lion Shu opened his eyes in shock, shouting the question, What is he doing? His hair blew in the wind. The blue dragon with a red chest opened its mouth menacingly, looking down. Sparks emanated from him in different directions, as if showing his strong aura with energy. His mane flowed smoothly in the wind, taking on different zigza shapes. Next to this dragon was a bird with fiery feathers. Golden sparks emanated from it, illuminating the dragon's body and all objects around. Lion Shu asked stunnedly in his mind, What is this? Is the world really over? Some time later, clouds moved smoothly across the blue sky. Bright sparks began to appear near the top of the mountain. Zhu Han at this time touched his hand to the side of the rocky mountain, tightly clinging to it with his fingers. The bright sun illuminated everything around. Zhu Han climbed almost his entire body onto the mountain. On this grew a tree with a thick trunk and a dense top consisting of leaves. Grass grew on the stones above due to the strong moisture coming from nearby clouds. Zhu Han held onto the stones and looked forward, thinking happily, finally. Next to his body, purple and white petals scattered in different directions. Zhu Han thought in his mind, if he remembered correctly, the aura began to settle after the nine-leaf lotus appeared. He looked ahead. Near the roots of the rose tree is a nine-leaf lotus. It was pink-purple with white tinges on the leaves. A faint pink glow emanated from it. Blue butterflies were flying next to the lotus. A nine-leaved lotus grew in the middle of a huge clearing of daisies, which raised their buds closer to the sun's rays. Zhu Han looked forward exhaustedly and with satisfaction, gritting his teeth. Sweat ran down his face from extreme fatigue. He thought that right now the aura should be concentrated mainly in Hanshan Park. Zhu Han still continued to hold on to the stones with his hands. Green leaves were falling down from a tree that stood in the middle of the mountaintop. Zhu Han reached out his hand to the nine-leaf lotus and thought, after he got this, he could begin his cultivation journey. Chamomiles grew not only on the soil, but also began to spread, thanks to their roots, onto stones. Zhu Han looked at the nine-leaf lotus he had uprooted and thought, after this, he will go to Jinxi Canyon on the outskirts of the city. 
He looked at this enthusiastically and began to think further that the lotus would be a good achievement for the first phase of cultivation. Leaves continued to fall from the tree, gently twisting in the wind. Suddenly, something inside him lit up with a golden glow. This was followed by purple stripes. Zuhan opened his mouth in shock, noticing the purple streaks next to him, and mentally asked the question, what happened? He exclaimed, why hasn't his cultivation awakened yet? He touched his chest with his hand and began to think further, what's stranger is that he feels his danchen. A bright glow consisting of golden light and violet began to emanate from his body in all directions. Sitting on the ground and placing his legs together, Zhu Han clutched the nine-leaf lotus to himself and looked at it peacefully. Violet zigzag stripes continued to move towards him at a fast speed, curling into different shapes with each passing second. The nine-leaf lotus shone tenderly in Zhu Han's hands. Zhu Han suggested, asking the question, could it be internal strength? He sat among the daisies. Zhu Han closed his eyes, mentally preparing himself. He frowned and mentally plunged into his consciousness. Inside this, he saw a golden ball, from which a yellow glow emanated and next to which there were purple threads in a zigzag shape. Zhu Han found himself in the middle of this. His body was all glowing with golden light. He asked in surprise, what is this? Suddenly, he realized and told himself to stop. The golden ball contained golden weapons decorated with various red-colored gems. The gold shone brightly, speaking of its power. Bright sparks and rays emanated from this in all directions. Some time later, the sky gradually began to turn into the dark color of night. Bright stars appeared on this, shining in different colors. Suddenly, a yellow streak appeared in the middle of the night sky. Golden sparkles appeared in Zhu Han's eyes. He laughed and realized what it was. Violet stripes still continued to rise up from his body. Zhu Han grinned and leaned his hands on his knees. He exclaimed triumphantly that this was his lucky day. Purple stripes mixed with gold still continued to powerfully spread from his body. Zhu Han remembered the weapon and how it gave off a golden glow. He couldn't imagine that he could be reborn in this world and have a chance to break through the Emperor's space. Zhu Han grinned smugly and chuckled, saying that it almost registered his regrets about dying. The golden streaks still continued to emanate from his body. Zhu Han remembered a white-haired old man in golden clothes looming over the city, which was located in a dome on a separate island. Near the island, there were thick clouds, through which the sun's rays broke through, illuminating other islands with a domed city. Zhu Han said, in any case, at the very end, he will be able to take his revenge and destroy the nine heavenly kings, then take the heavenly throne itself. He held a nine-leaf lotus in his hands, which had acquired a blue tint, and began to meditate. Golden stripes rose up from it, taking on zigzag shapes. Zhu Han thought that he was truly lucky. With the discovery of his danshan, his cultivation grew by itself. Zhu Han closed his eyes complacently and thought that he would be the primary person who awakened his cultivation. Gusts of wind smoothly swayed the grass growing to the ground. He remembered the signs posted on the mansion and thought, in his past life, the list of awakened ones showed that someone had awakened their cultivation within three days. Zhu Han suddenly noticed a strange energy coming from the side. He opened his eyes and looked in that direction in surprise, exhaling questioningly. His golden aura still emanated from him in thick stripes. He held in his palm a nine-leaf lotus, which shone softly with a pink color. Zhu Han noticed strange growing fruits on a tree with a thick trunk, shimmering in the daylight. He mentally thought that these fruits emitted a strong aura. He walked up to the tree and, putting his palm out, caught a black fruit coming down. Zhu Han thought, if it weren't for his knowledge from his past life, he wouldn't even notice it. In his hands, the fruit took on a golden hue and illuminated the space next to him. Zhu Han looked at this with delight. With his other hand, he held a nine-leaf lotus, glowing pink. Zhu Han thought he was almost deceived by the appearance of these fruits. He began to look more closely at the fruit plucked from the tree and could not believe that it was an incredibly rare life-giving fruit. Zhu Han held it in his hands with a gentle movement and examined it carefully. He remembered how a crowd of people would throw it up and then try to catch it by pushing each other. Zhu Han thought that these life-giving fruits were incredibly useful for improving cultivation. During the middle phase, this could become a reason for a holy war. Zhu Han hid the fruit in the back of his jacket and thought that these three fruits were life-giving. He began to think further that his cultivation was very fast and would improve much more in a short time. He looked ahead thoughtfully. Zhu Han remembered the palace tower standing in the middle of the mountains and dense forest. 
he thought that he couldn't wait to go to Jinchi Canyon to snatch more sacred items. He thought that he already had enough strength to keep those idiots away from the Zhu Zion family. Suddenly, Zhu Han heard strange sounds coming from the mountainside. He turned in surprise at this and noticed Lion Shu climbing up the rocky stones. Lion Shu shouted at him to stop. He complained and added that the world seemed to have gone crazy. Lion Shu wearily lowered his shoulders, finally ascending the mountain. He wiped the sweat dripping from his face with a scarf with stars and exclaimed in shock that he had just seen a mountain that randomly appeared out of nowhere. He added indignantly that now he saw dragons flying in the stupid sky. Zhu Han looked at him warily, listening to what he said. He didn't express any emotion. Lion Shu at this time begged him to tell him what was happening. Zhu Han pressed the lotus with all his strength to the chest of the surprised Lion Shu, who froze in place, looking at it. Zhu Han exclaimed to take this lotus. He seriously added that he should start cultivating as soon as possible. Zhu Han began to remove his hand from Lion Shu's chest and thought that his danshan had already awakened, so he only needed the Tuguyo fruit. Zhu Han looked at the surprised Lion Shu, who was holding the nine-leaf lotus with caution, and thought that this lotus is useless to him now and Lion Shu does not seem to be a bad person. Zhu Han thought it would be better if he returned it to the original owner. Suddenly, with a bright golden flash, he pushed off from the ground and evaporated into the air, beginning to fly upward, accompanied by golden zigs-shaped stripes. Zhu Han shouted to Lion Shu that they would see each other again. Lion Shu looked stunned at the place where Zhu Han had stood before and tightened his grip on the nine-leaf lotus in his hands. Zhu Han began to fly over a mountain with a tree where life-giving fruits grew and looked down. Lion Shu dumbfoundedly spread his arms to the sides and watched this. Zhu Han was flying past waterfalls and rocks located in the middle of the lake at this time. Lion Shu exclaimed in shock, asking, does he fly? He exclaimed in disbelief that it seemed the world had really changed. Zhu Shan landed noisily on the ground next to the waterfalls. As soon as his feet and hands touched the ground, a bright golden glow appeared from his torso, spreading throughout the entire atmosphere. Golden zigzag stripes still continued to spread in the air from his movements. Zhu Han cursed and thought that his jumping was still slow. He thought, looking down thoughtfully, that he needed to quickly find a place where he would absorb the Tujio fruit. After some time at the hotel, the windows from the hotel room glowed brightly due to the lights in the room being turned on. Zhu Han sat with sweat dripping profusely from his face. He was surrounded by a bright glow, similar to tongues of flame. Zhu Han hovered in the air while cultivating and thought that this really helped his cultivation. Next to him were three Tujo fruits, which were also hanging in the air because they were held by the golden stripes of Zhu Han's aura. Zhu Han concentrated completely on this. He thought that he had just begun, but the aura from these three Tujo fruits was very strong. The fruit and his body brightly illuminated the room with golden light. Zhu Han thought he could definitely break through to the intermediate stage. The fruit continued to emanate a bright golden aura throughout the hotel room. Three days later, the hotel window broke into many small pieces. It began to scatter all over the street due to the strong energy emanating from the hotel room. Zhu Han put his palm forward, above which golden zigzag-shaped stripes began to swirl into a funnel, and, laughing, said the fruit was finally removed. He began to bend his finger one by one, controlling the golden stripes. Zhu Han raised his palm up, above which a huge ball created from golden threads appeared, and said that it took him three days to absorb these Tujo fruits. He looked at it smugly as he continued to manage it. Zhu Han brought the palm over which the ball hung towards him and said, looking at it carefully, that his cultivation had reached the last stage of the middle layer of the base. He said that his body is now filled with power. He exclaimed excitedly that it felt so good. Zhu Han opened the hotel door and walked out into the street, brightly lit by the rays of the sun. He thought it was all great. He began to think further. After solving some problems at school, he would have time to go to Jin Yi Canyon. Zhu Han straightened his jacket with his hands and looked forward with enthusiasm, smiling sincerely. The bright rays of the sun illuminated his face and clothes. After some time at school, a huge architectural building stood in the middle of the city, illuminated by the sun. On both sides of the building, there were long steps with a glass fence. One of the students whispered the question, how will the government deal with this? Several disciples walked to the other side of Zhu Han and added, they heard that chaos had broken out all over the world. Zhu Han put his hands in his pockets and silently walked forward, pursing his lips. 
Another of the students added that he read on the internet that people began to cultivate and received abilities like in comics. Zuhan looked sideways, noticing how the green-haired guy grabbed another guy with a short dark haircut with his hand. A guy with a short dark haircut asked a question, Chang Zion. He told him to shut up because it was just fake news. He explained, in fact, he had heard himself that some in their school had started eating strange fruits. He added, what if he could fly and change his body? Suddenly, Zhu Han noticed many pairs of legs in front of him, blocking his path. In the middle of black trousers and black men's shoes stood a girl in white boots that did not reach her knees. Zyman Kin, with his head bandaged, said to Zhu Han furiously that it had been a long time since their last meeting. He already thought that he had escaped. Pan Lian Lian stood next to him, stubbornly pressing her hands to her sides and defiantly looking at Zhu Han standing in front of them. Zyman Kin smiled gloatingly and said, he didn't know that he was so stupid as to come back. The guys behind him began to mock the words about Zhu Han. Zhu Han, without expressing any emotion, firmly told Zyman Kin to leave him alone. He looked forward firmly and without fear. A few guys behind Zyman Kin whispered, asking, Zhu Han doesn't know. They explained that Zyman Kin ate the strangest fruit. Several more guys behind him opened their mouths in shock, afraid of what would happen next. Zyman Kin smugly clenched his fist, on which the veins began to bulge, and said, He sees that he is just as arrogant. He asked Zhu King, Does he think he will be lucky again? He smiled smugly, showing his snow-white teeth, and shouted that he would teach him a lesson. His hand, which had recently bulged with veins, had turned into a bear's paw with sharp claws. He waved his paw and shouted that Zhu Han should not joke with the cultivators. Zyman Kin began to swing his huge bear paw and, jumping at Zhu Han, shouted that he would, but he did not finish his threat. Zhu Han stood in front of him, not moving at all. Zyman Kin again tried to repeat his threat that he would, but he did not finish and stared dumbfoundedly at the fist approaching him. Drops of sweat began to run down his face from excitement. Zyman Kin at that very moment began to fly away to the side at full speed. Barely noticeable smoke came from his bare paw. Zhu Han began to shake the hand that he hit Zyman Kin, and arrogantly closing his eyes, said not to waste his time. A golden glow emanated from his body. Pan Lian Lian, stunned and trembling all over, stretched out her hand forward, exclaiming, Impossible, she said in a trembling voice as he did. Suddenly her fingernails began to stretch out, turning white. The shape of the nails became pointed and very long. The veins on Pan Lian Lian's face began to protrude, and her teeth became pointed. She said that they had eaten magic fruits. Sweat was still dripping from her face from excitement. Some time later, four red bones with spikes grew on her back. Black horns sprouted on her head. Pian Lian Lian opened her mouth with sharp teeth threateningly and roared fiercely. She cannot accept this, she added, continuing to run quickly along the asphalt, that she would kill him. The school students were stunned and frozen in place as they watched this situation. Zhu Han began to flex his fists and laughed smugly. He pressed his palm hard onto his fist and called her stupid. Some time later, he dealt a strong blow to Pan Langlian's face, who began to fly away a long distance. Zhu Han's blow emitted a bright golden glow, swirling in a circular motion. Pan Langlian began waving her arms and legs doomedly, trying to catch on to something in the air to soften her fall. Zhu Han grinned as he watched this and said that insects should know their place. Pan Lion Lion landed immobilized on the ground, looking up doomedly. Tears were streaming from her eyes, and sweat continued to pour down her face profusely. Zhu Han looked at Pan Lion Lion and Zyman Kin lying in the schoolyard. They lay amid the rubble and smoke from their recent battle with him. He carefully examined the protruding bones from Pan Lion Lion's back and Zyman Kin's bearish arm. Zhu Han thought they were lucky. He explained this in his mind by saying that they were able to eat the fruit and awaken cultivation. Zhu Han thought they all gained different abilities. He carefully began to look at Zyman Kin's bare paw, thinking that this most common ability simply makes a person faster, but the potential for this growth is limited. What was even worse was that the transformation ability was simply useless. He remembered a guy with long hair who had two crosses in his ears and thought that there were also lucky people with exceptional abilities. Zhu Han met one in his previous life, but unfortunately he could not control his own strength. Suddenly there was a loud explosion at the top of the school. The walls and windows of the school showed deep cracks. Thick smoke consisting of dust began to spread throughout the atmosphere. The octopus's tentacles waved furiously in all directions. 
Zhu Han mentally thought of an explosion. The octopus tentacles continued to flail, finally destroying the school in half. Zhu Han thought, the nearby students are doomed. He knew that this monster was too fierce. Zhu Han looked at this without any surprise and thought that the monster had suddenly appeared and shocked all the students. The student with green hair opened his mouth in shock, very frightened. Zhu Han looked at the monster between the broken school and shouted that he was using thunder roar. The octopus had a blue stone in its forehead. His eyes glowed scarlet, which did not bode well. The monster pushed the walls of the school with its tentacles and began to move forward. The walls of the school began to collapse. A huge stream of dust began to cover all the schoolchildren who had not yet run away from here. The guy with green hair watching this started to run away and shouted at everyone to run. Another guy with purple hair started crying in defeat and called someone for help. Several more guys tried to catch up with them, running away from the monster destroying their school. The guy with blue hair desperately asked the question, what is this? The girl with disposable hair remained standing in place, starting to cry doomedly. She pressed her hands to her chest and closed her eyes, afraid to open them. The octopus stood next to her and looked at her carefully. He swung his tentacle, trying to strike. The girl with pink hair cried bitterly and asked her mother, Where is she? She pressed her hands to her chest and raised her face upward in despair. Suddenly, the octopus swung its tentacle, trying to kill the girl with pink hair. The girl screamed desperately, pressing her hands even harder to herself. Her legs buckled from fear. Rubble from the destroyed school lay all around. Zuhan put his hands out to the sides and exclaimed, How dare this monster harm the people next to him? Balls appeared next to his palms, from which golden streaks of his aura emanated. Suddenly, the girl's figure began to quickly approach the pink-haired girl whom the octopus was trying to kill. The monster still continued to stand in the dust. Zuhan turned back in shock after noticing the strange movements. He exhaled questioningly, not understanding anything. Suddenly, the octopus tentacles landed on the asphalt with all its strength, breaking through it. Deep cracks appeared on the asphalt and huge dust rose again. Lu Yunzi grabbed the child by the chest and jumped away from the tentacle to the side, shouting for the girl to be careful. She landed on her feet, holding the child tightly in her arms, and said that she saved her at the last moment. Lu Yunzi's hair fluttered in the wind. Zhu Han looked at the pink-haired girl carefully, putting one hand in his pocket. He bit his lip and looked down thoughtfully. Lu Yunzi turned to Pan Lianlian and Zyman Kin, telling them not to be afraid. Pan Lianlian looked at her in shock. Zyman Kin put his hand forward in shock, as if trying to defend himself. Lu Yunzi had pink eyes. She turned to them and confidently said that as long as she was next to them, no one would touch them. A powerful aura, blue-white in color, emanated from her body. Zyman Kin smiled widely, showing off his white teeth, which had black holes in several places. He said she looked amazing during the chaos. Zyman Kin put his palms together as a sign of respect and said that she is so strong. He asked him to defeat this giant monster. Pan Lianlian angrily folded her hands in front of her and said in disappointment, It is obvious that the class president is so strong. She is also the queen of the school. Zhu Han is a weakling compared to her. He looked sadly towards Lu Yunzi. Pan Lianlian angrily continued, so did those scum who stood aside while the girl was in danger. Zyman Kin and Pan Lianlian respectfully put their palms together and said with a smile that they will not do this again. Have a good day. Lu Yunzi walked past them silently. She held the little girl's hand in her hand and asked Zhu Han to look after the child while she dealt with the monster. She added that they should move away. It would be difficult for her to protect them and fight the monster at the same time. She said that she wouldn't mind giving him some cultivation tips. Zhu Han asked offendedly, should I protect him? A tear of humiliation ran down his cheek. He said to himself that he is the king of the gods and a simple girl is trying to protect him. He noticed the magical weapon she was holding in her hand. He wondered resentfully, was Lu Yunzi joking? She held a magical weapon in her hands and looked forward. Lu Yunzi determined that it was a two-star monster at an early stage of cultivation. She will test how strong he is. Lu Yunzi quickly rose up, striking the monster with energy blows. Zuhan said that this is quite good. She has great potential. If he takes her with him, it will make his path easier. Zuhan held the girl's hand, looked up at Lu Yunzi, and thought that the weapon in her hand looked like a family heirloom. Unfortunately, he did not meet her family in a past life. He has no information about her. Zuhan watched as she floated in the air and rose higher, striking the monster. 
Zuhan wondered if she still had secrets. He patted the little girl on the head and said that they need to leave here. It's dangerous here. Through tears, she asked the question, what about her older sister? She's still fighting the monster. The girl, shedding tears, asked in fear, will Lu Yunzi be able to defeat the monster? Zhu Han smiled and told her not to worry. Big sister is very strong. The monster will definitely lose. Zhu Han thought that his actions caused the butterfly effect to occur. Lu Yunzi will be able to protect the school. At this time, she resolutely climbed up the octopus's tentacle and thought that she had to hurry. Her eyes shone with determination. Lu Yunzi thought, or there will be casualties. She activated her spiritual power and launched a strong energy strike. Hesitantly holding her weapon with both hands in front of her, she thought that she still didn't know how to properly use this weapon. The monster, flashing red eyes, growled angrily. Lu Yunzi saw Zhu Han and the girls heading away. She thought approvingly that taking the child away was a good idea. She hoped with hope that he would help defeat the monster when he took her away from here. Lu Yunzi decided that she had to hold out until then. She then asked anxiously, is he really leaving? Lu Yunzi angrily realized that this selfish freak had escaped over time. Jinhee Canyon. Zhu Han sighed tiredly and said that he was finally here. He looked in front of him. There were many cultivators standing in front of him. Some of them had wings, some had horns. They were all dressed in bright and unusual clothes. Zhu Han wondered in his mind in surprise, what's going on? Why are there so many people here? He looked at the cultivators ahead of him and thought that in his previous life, only two families knew about the local treasure. He asked himself, why is it different now? Lion Shu said that a fruit will appear here. The rumors are still different, so the cultivators began to arrive. He thinks the rumors are true. Lion Shu hoped that he could obtain the holy fruit. With his help, he can become a strong cultivator and then marry a beauty. Zuhan stood in a clearing covered with bright green grass and looked at the large number of people with disappointment. Glowing golden balls floated in the air. Next to him, cultivators in extravagant clothes stood everywhere, and reporters took pictures of them with their cameras. Chen Zion replied without Lion Shu even thinking, let him see what strong cultivators have arrived. Lion Shu put his hand on his shoulder and indignantly asked what he was talking about. Most of them are ordinary people. Lion Shu looked between the two people and happily asked why he was here. He grabbed Zhu Han's hand and said through his tears, thank God, he thought he would never see him again. He is very happy. Zhu Han, removing his hand, said with concern, he is here too. He asked a question, has Lion Shu already consumed the Nine Leaf Lotus? Lion Shu happily replied that right after he gave it to him. He can now absorb the aura of heaven and earth. He happily added that Zhu Han is a very good person. After that incident, he realized the value of sacred fruits. Sacred fruits that can awaken cultivation are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And he gave it to him just like that. Lion Shu happily said that he was very grateful to him. Zhu Han listened to him with excitement, then extended his hand forward and said, Stop. Lion Shu fell silent and looked at him in surprise. Zhu Han lowered his hand and said, Firstly, don't call him God. His name is Zhu Han. Secondly, let him describe the local situation to him. Lion Shu raised his index finger and said that the problem was that someone on the internet published information that there was a sacred treasure guarded by monsters hidden in Jinhee Canyon. This caught the attention of many people. Zhu Han asked sadly, someone? If he knew that this would happen, then why didn't he take advantage of it himself? Instead, he published the news. Suddenly, screams were heard in the distance. Look at this, there. Lion Shu turned in the direction from which they were shouting, raised his hand and looked closely. Zhu Han thought that this just confirmed that his guess about the butterfly effect was correct. Zhu Han looked to the side with interest. Lion Shu told him to look at those people. There was a dark-haired girl in red clothes walking there. Lion Shu reported that this woman looked like Lu Yunzi from the Lu family. And then, pointing to two men with long white hair and white robes, he asked excitedly, Are these Feng Ganzi and Feng Jenyu and the Feng families? Lion Shu heard that these two geniuses who began cultivating before awakening cultivation. When Lu Yunzi approached, people shouted in delight, Madame Lu. Someone posted that he's a big fan of hers. Zhu Han looked at them with concern. Lion Shu said that he needed to explain. People say that the Feng family is very famous in Nandao City. Zhu Han looked after Lu Yunzi, and Lion Shu continued, They are so strong that people cannot even imagine. And Madame Lu is a brilliant cultivator. When the aura first began to awaken, his family hired many capable cultivators. His family and the Lu family have some things to do together. 
Lion Shu, rubbing his hands contentedly, asked with a smile, Zhu Han wants to join. He replied that he was not interested and walked forward. Lion Shu opened his mouth wide in surprise. Then, catching up with Zhu Han, he excitedly called out to him, Brother Zhu. Pan Lian Lian said irritably that at that time at school, Madame Lu only saw him as a classmate. She doesn't care about him. She indignantly asked, now that he knew her identity, was he going to suck up to her? Zyman Kin smiled widely and said that he and Pan Lian Lian were now following Madame Lu. Even though they are classmates, Mrs. Lu's personality is very different from theirs. He extended his hands towards her, and they simultaneously told him to quickly apologize to her. Zuhan said irritably, idiot. Pan Lian Lian and Zyman Kin, who were standing on either side of Lu Yunzi, stared at him in shock, not expecting such an answer. Lian Shu leaned over and covered his mouth with his hand, holding back his laughter. When he failed, he laughed loudly, clutching his stomach. People around him looked at him in surprise. Lion Shu waved his hand, smoothed the hair on his head, apologized through tears of laughter, and said that he really couldn't resist. Then Lion Shu showed an approving gesture by raising his thumb and covering his mouth with his palm so that only Zhu Han could hear what he said, saying that Brother Zhu was really funny. When people start respecting Mrs. Ears Lu, he calls her followers idiots, he respects him. Zhu Han looked back at him and said that he did not have so much time to waste on fools. He leaves it to him. Pan Lian Lian watched as Zhu Han indifferently walked further away from them and asked, Will Lady Lu teach him a lesson? Lu Yunzi blocked her path with her hand, thus stopping her, and replied that she should just forget, leave him. She looked at him and said resolutely that they would wait until he knew true power. He needs to know not to rely too much on his luck. Lu Yunzi was mentally indignant. She thought angrily that she had never been ignored in front of everyone. Their battle is not over yet. Someone's footsteps were heard. Feet in white boots approached her, walking through the green grass. Someone said that this guy is just a cockroach who doesn't know his place. Feng Jenyu, a young man with snow-white long hair, approached Lu Yunzi and said that by entering the mountains, he would help her finish him off. Next to him stood an old man wearing the same white robes as Feng Jenyu. Lu Yunzi looked at him in surprise and calmly replied that it was none of his business. No need to interfere. She can take care of herself. Lu Yunzi turned around so abruptly that her hair fluttered in different directions as it touched him. Feng Zhenyu looked after her in disappointment. There was laughter behind him. He frowned angrily and said through his teeth, Let him wait until he finds the sacred treasure. Feng Zhenyu looked at her back and resolutely added that she would bow to him afterwards. He then turned to the elder standing next to him and asked Uncle Lai what the plan was for the sacred treasure. Uncle Lai held the stick with both hands and replied that Feng Gongzi and the whole family had already taken care of it. This sacred treasure in Jinxi Canyon is just perfect for him. After three days, Zhu Han stood on top of the rock and thought that Jinxi Canyon was the best place in Handao City. With little effort, he found many sacred fruit trees. There were many bloody, dead monsters lying on the ground around him. Zhu Han defeated a huge bear with sharp thorns sticking out of its body. Nearby lay bloody giant wolves and a dead dragon. Golden-colored energy waves emanated from Zuhan. He sat in the lotus position and meditated, thinking, although there are many wild beasts here, this only helps him improve his cultivation. These monsters are no match for him. In front of him on the stone lay many different fruits, from which magical light emanated. Zuhan said, although the aura of these fruits is much lower than that of the Zhuguo fruit, it still helps him reach the pinnacle of the final stage of the main level. Then, he will correct his past mistakes. Zuhan said with a happy smile that this is perfect. Zuhan remembered that before, no matter how, he could not reach the Emperor's realm. This was because its foundation was not perfect. The foundation plays a huge role. Creating a foundation can affect what level a cultivator can reach. An ideal foundation is the best condition for the formation phase, but to reach the god realm, two levels are required. This was a mistake of the past. Now it forms the perfect base. Moreover, it is very important to use the aura cultivation and absorption method. Zuhan quickly walked towards the body of the huge bloody wolf. Someone patted him on the shoulder and said that this technique was only used on dead monsters. To use the technique on this red-eyed monster, it needs to be processed. This aura absorption technique is very good. It will collect aura from the skeleton and blood of monsters, gradually turning them into aura. The higher the cultivation level, the more aura you need to absorb. Legendary beasts are needed to cleanse the aura. Cultivators also absorb aura. 
A day later, at the top of the rock, there grew a tree from which a magical blue-white glow emanated. Zuhan put out his palm, and a golden fruit fell there. He stood contentedly next to the tree, holding a golden fruit in his hand, and joyfully said that he had finally received the mystical spirit. Even if the third level is weaker than the Tujio fruit, this one is not that bad. Zuhan, who was standing next to the magic tree, heard a noise behind him. He listened and asked in surprise what? Someone decided to attack. Zuhan turned around and jumped high. An explosion was heard near the tree. Zuhan angrily asked, Who is he? The answer came that his name was Long Bao Chan. Long Bao Chan noticed that Zhu Han was fast enough to avoid his attack. He reached forward and caught his red weapon, saying that his sword could not kill him. Long Bao Chan. He told Zhu Han to give him his fruit. He might spare him if he begs on his knees. Long Bao Chan, a guy with a red mohawk on his head and wearing red clothes, said that he was in a good mood. Perhaps he would spare him. On either side of him stood armed soldiers wearing balaclavas on their heads. They were dressed in military uniforms over which they had body armor. Zhu Han asked mockingly, Long Bao Chen, did his mom give him such a funny name? Long Bao Chen said angrily, how will he speak now? He pointed his hand at the military man, who pointed his weapon at Zhu Han. Long Bao Chen added threateningly that this weapon is loaded. Zhu Han reached into the inner pocket of his white school jacket, put the fruit in there, and thought with interest that Long Bao Chen was killing with a simple weapon. He wants to check the result of absorbing the aura. Some cultivators will not be able to withstand being shot from this weapon. Both soldiers simultaneously fired from the rocket launchers on their shoulders. The missiles flew out and headed towards Zuhan. He stood calmly and looked at it, not trying to evade. There was a strong explosion. The rock caught fire and turned crimson. The soldiers looked at each other and laughed maliciously. One of them cheerfully said that this kid was so scared that he couldn't even move. Another said through laughter that now this fruit belongs to the master. That kid couldn't survive. Zuhan stepped forward and mentally thought how self-confident they were. He stood in the middle of the fire on the rock, alive and well, and sadly thought that he was now in the early stage of the mystical iron body. If they had arrived a couple of days later, he would have simply repelled this missile. Zuhan admitted with resentment that he was even a little hurt. Long Bao Chan said excitedly that the attack was very strong. One of the military men confirmed this and added that it was also very dazzling. Another soldier tried to see what was there on the rock and in despair said that he could not see anything. After a while, they all stared ahead in shock. Long Bao Chan shouted in horror, What nonsense? He asked in shock, How did Zhu Han survive his attack? He had killed many cultivators like him, but no one had survived being shot from his rocket launcher. Long Bao Chan asked in bewilderment why he was still standing. The smoke cleared and the fire subsided. Zhu Han was clearly visible on the top of the cliff, safe and sound. Long Bao Qian asked in surprise, was he protected by a magic item? He then said affirmatively that, of course, it was just a magic item. Long Bao Qian said with relief that in that case, he didn't have to worry about it. He reached up and took out his red sword. Long Bao Qian stepped forward and angrily shouted that this was an extraordinary sword. He ordered Zhu Han to give him his magic item, and he would let him escape. Long Bao Chen rushed forward. Zhu Han crossed his hands in front of him and calmly asked the question, doesn't he think it should be the other way around? Zhu Han said ironically that Long Bao Chen should apologize for provoking him. Seeing that he was heading towards him, Zhu Han laughed and said that he saw that he did not understand him. Long Bao Chen ran towards him, brandishing his red-colored sword. He angrily asked, is Zhu Han trying to threaten him? He said threateningly that he would cut him into pieces with this sword. Zhu Han flashed his eyes resolutely in anticipation and activated his spiritual energy. A glow of blue and gold emanated from it. Zhu Han mockingly asked, with this sword? He admitted that it was too easy. When the magic sword approached Zhu Han, he created a shield from his aura and deflected it. Zhu Han said smugly that he would show him what a real Faishan flying sword was. Long Bao Qian stopped and widened his eyes in shock. He asked in surprise how. Long Bao Chan stated that this was impossible. He asked, did Zhu Han stop his sword simply with an aura barrier? Long Bao Chan took a closer look and added only if Zhu Han was not in the final stage of cultivation. Zhu Han mockingly said that he realized too late. Time for a counterattack. Zhu Han disappeared into thin air and teleported behind his opponents. Long Bao Chan asked a question in disbelief as he disappeared. 
Zuhan put energy into his fist and said that he would give him a gift in the form of pure physical strength. Zuhan swung his fist towards the back of Long Bao Chan's head and said let him try to block it. Long Bao Chan looked around in shock. Some time later, Long Bao Chan's assistants flew upward, dropping the rocket launchers from their hands. The birds began to fly in fear across the sky, no longer sitting on the branches of the trees. Cumulus clouds floated smoothly across the blue sky. Long Bao Tian collapsed with his entire body due to the strong attack to his stomach. He flew backwards, making an incomprehensible sound. Zhu Han's attack twisted into various arc shapes, carrying Long Bao Tian to a far distance. Long Bao Tian slammed his back into a thick tree trunk with all his might. The tree cracked with a loud sound from a strong blow. It was bent in half. Long Bao Tian leaned his back on the tree that was broken in half. He said, he admits that Zhu Han is strong. Zhu Han was standing over Long Bao Chan at this time, looking at him carefully. Long Bao Chan said at this time, he believes it. A strange golden-colored smoke was spreading from the tree in all directions. Long Bao Chan was shaking all over. Bloated veins appeared on his head. Long Bao Chan, with a shaking hand, held out a golden bag tied with a rope with blue stones and explained that this bag contained treasures. A golden glow came from the bag, spreading at a close distance with it. Long Bao Tian looked forward with a frown and said that this contained the perfume he took from the monk. Blood flowed profusely from his mouth, staining his neck and collarbones. Long Bao Tian pressed his hand to his chest and said with a serious look, let him take it and spare it. Zhu Han took it in his hands and laughed smugly, saying that it was perfect. He began to open the bag with two fingers, holding it with the other hand. Zhu Han looked there curiously and said, this bag has everything he needs. Long Bao Chan still continued to press his hand to his chest and bowed and said, Since Zhu Han took this, he can go. He slowly began to walk around the tree that had been broken in half. Long Bao Chan covered his eye with one hand. He smirked and mentally called him a morong. Long Bao Chan thought skeptically that he dared to go against him. He mentally added that he should just wait, because after he leaves here, he will ask someone to kill him. Long Bao Chan smiled, showing bloody teeth. Zhu Han suddenly shouted at his back, who told him that he could go. Long Bao Tian stopped in shock and desperately asked the question, What? Sweat was running down his face from excitement. A ball of dense golden color appeared above Zhu Han's hand. He asked Long Bao Tian a question. Did he think he was completely stupid? He shouted angrily, spreading his fingers wide. He thinks he will let him get away after he found out about him. Many bright white sparks appeared next to Zhu Han's body. Long Bao Chan turned around in panic and shouted that he didn't need anything. He swore he wouldn't say anything. Sweat continued to flow profusely down his face, still out of intense fear. Long Bao Chan raised his hand to the side in fear and shouted that he was from a rich family. He added that his brother's name was Long Aoshan. Zhu Han released a ball made entirely of his golden aura. It began to move forward with great speed, twisting in different directions. It sent sparks in all directions. A bright yellow light spread across everything nearby. Long Bao Chan looked forward in fear. Clear liquid began to flow from his nose as panic set in. Very noticeable capillaries appeared before his eyes and cracked. Long Bao Chan, still sweating, desperately shouted that he was an invincible genius and was being compared to Lu Jia. He added that his brother would take revenge, but he did not finish his thought. Zhu Han's fireball immediately slammed into him with all his might. It lit up the mountain with a bright flash, illuminating all the trees nearby. The birds flew out of the forest in fear and quickly fluttered their wings in panic to fly away from the bright light and loud sound from the attack. Zhu Han smugly tossed the bag in his hands and, grinning, asked again, Long Aoshan. He skeptically asked the question, what will he do to him? He straightened his shoulders arrogantly, looking down. Zhu Han asked again, does his family want to die? A golden aura spread from his body in all directions. Long Bao Chan lay on the ground with his arms at his sides exhausted. His face showed no emotion, thick smoke emanating skyward from his chest due to Zhu Han's attack. Long Bao Chan lay in a hole in the middle of the mountain caused by the explosion and did not move. Zhu Han looked at it and thought, it looks like there are a lot of treasures in this bag. He turned the bag over and began to shake it. He said that the rich Long Bao Chan family is really good at treasure hunting. Various things began to fall from the bag. Down fell a makeup brush, some lipsticks, and a strange pink candy. Everything that fell down glowed brightly, thanks to the sun's rays. 
On the ground lay many swords and daggers, their sharpened blades shining with a bright metallic sheen. In addition to weapons, there were many vials, test tubes, notebooks, textbooks, and strange-looking fruits lying on the ground. Zhu Han said in shock, Wow. He turned to Long Bao Tian and admitted that he did not expect such a large amount of treasure. He waved his bag in surprise and said, It's immediately clear that he killed a lot of people for the sake of such things. Zhu Han exclaimed that he was unlucky to meet him. Suddenly, he noticed something strange. Wary, Zhu Han asked the question, What is this? He opened his mouth in surprise, peering attentively at it. There was a bottle on the ground. This one contained a strange-looking rock sitting in sparkling blue water. Zhu Han took a step forward towards it and watched carefully. He picked up the bottle of liquid with the stone inside in his hands and curiously asked the question as he opened it, Was this the seed of one of the five elements? The stopper of the bottle came out of the neck of the bottle with a loud sound. Zhu Han finally opened the bottle. From this, the threads followed in a bright pink-purple color, making a zigzag movement. Zhu Han put the cap aside in surprise, looking at the liquid in the bottle. He laughed and said, This bottle really contains the seed of one of the elements. He added, lifting the bottle up to build the perfect base, he needed a spiritual stone. In the atmosphere, meanwhile, the red aura emanating from the neck of the bottle took on the shape of a star and hung in the atmosphere without moving. In addition, a circle appeared nearby, having a yellow-blue color and different paintings. Zhu Han raised his head up in surprise, watching this carefully. He remembered the blue dragon with the snow-white mane and thought that Jin He Canyon had not appeared this time. He was afraid that Long Bao Tian had no idea what treasures were in that bag. At this time, the blue dragon was spinning its whole body next to the stones of the five elements. He cautiously held his paw next to the stones, as if pretending that he would not allow it to be stolen. Zhu Han thought at this time that it was impossible to determine the price of the five element seeds. He mentally explained that these seeds were one of the rarest items in the entire world. All the practitioners had heard about these seeds, and they thought it was a myth. A blue aura emanated from the blue dragon in all directions, filling the entire space around. Zhu Han looked at the bottle in his hands and said contentedly, This treasure is not as strong as the one that should have appeared at Jinhai Canyon. He added that this was the opinion of some practitioners. Zhu Han spun the bottle with the stone in his hands and said that Ning Yang ran away from the villain, but left the seven five elements behind. He, looking at the play of colors in the water with the stone, added, But even after that, it will be difficult for him to practice the ideal base. Suddenly, he heard a strange sound inside his jacket, similar to the vibration of a telephone. Zhu Han looked at the jacket in surprise, putting the bottle to the side. He picked up the phone and, unlocking it, saw a call on the black screen that Lion Shu was calling him. Zhu Han picked up the phone and looked at it askance. Lion Shu placed two fingers in greeting on his head and said, He has not seen him for several days. He asked him the question, Where is he now? Lion Shu smiled sincerely and immediately added that if he had not added him to the messenger for messaging and phone calls, he would not have been able to call him. Zhu Han looked carefully at the phone screen while still holding the bottle in his hands. He said he was practicing in the mountains. He asked the question, what else does he need? Leaves flew down from the tree above him, swirling in the wind. Lion Shu turned the phone screen over, pointing to the tall towers arranged in a semicircle, and shared that he was at the top of the mountain where the divine weapon should appear. He exclaimed that they must have it. He leaned his other hand on his side and added that he was now surrounded by cultivators. He explained that most of them have been standing here for at least three days. Lion Shu raised the phone to his face again and suggested with an admiring look that maybe they could even get it. He wished him luck and advised him to take the weapon. Zhu Han replied coldly, he knows and will try. He immediately raised his finger to the button to end the call. At this time, Lion Shu opened his mouth in shock, unable to say anything more. He immediately began to actively press his fingers on the phone, trying to go somewhere. He told Zhu Han to wait because he had a list of people from the Northern Islands. He found King Yin's list. Lion Shu added, if he sees these people in the crowd, he better avoid them. They are all geniuses with superpowers. He looked at the phone where messages were constantly coming. In another message, Lion Shu sent a list. The phone said that messages from the opponent would arrive soon. Zhu Han looked at the list carefully and said that Lu Yunzi had the first rank. He carefully looked at each line of the list and said, Long Bastion was also here. He added that the abilities of these two are beyond human comprehension. Zhu Han peered attentively at the phone screen. 
After a moment, he put it away in his jacket pocket and thought, Now there is no person who can defeat him unless he has formed a base. Zhu Han looked forward confidently and exclaimed purposefully that he was completely invincible now. He looked at a high mountain, near which many dragons and butterflies were flying. He hoped that these two would not allow him to break through the foundation and reach the kingdom of Dan. Next, Zhu Han will take the divine weapon. He moved deeper into the dense forest. Many luminous butterflies were flying in the forest. Birds flying over the trees glowed as brightly as other living creatures. Zhu Han put his hands in his pockets and slowly moved forward. Some time later on Mount Tai Handing, Near the mountain, there were many sparks sprinkling it. The butterflies still continued to fly animatedly over the forest. In the middle, next to a stone circular fence, stood on a stone platform a long monument, decorated on the sides with patterns and glowing with a bright yellow light. A huge crowd stood nearby, watching it. Zhu Han walked up to it and dumbfoundedly asked the question, What is this? The girl with the tail on her head exclaimed that this is a very overwhelming aura. The huge yellow architectural monument depicted a tree made of wood. In the middle of this stood a strange figure, his hands strangely hanging down. The girl with the ponytail exclaimed for everyone to get ready to take it. Zhu Han looked forward in surprise and asked the question, Has the best position already been taken? He stood still, not moving anywhere. Next to the monument on which the tree was carved stood a girl whose kimono was blowing in all directions due to the strong wind. There was another guy standing on the other side, his hands calmly at his sides. Opposite the girl stood a man with luxurious and powerful wings behind his back. And also, opposite the white-haired guy standing quietly, there was a man dressed in a woolen coat. The girl standing next to the yellow figure was named Lu Yunzi. She took first place. Feng Zhenyu stood at her side. He frowned and looked ahead. He was ranked 8th. The guy who had luxurious wings on his back and stood opposite Lu Yunzi had the third rank and the silver wings of the god of war. The man standing in his coat frowned forward with his green eyes. A gold ring was inserted into his nose. He had the fifth rank and was a mighty bull king. Zhu Han heard Lion Shu call him. He looked to the side and noticed him happily waving his hand and shouting that he had finally arrived. Lion Shu's face was filled with happiness. He exclaimed that many cultivators after him would not be a problem for him. He added that he practiced alone in the mountains. Zhu Han continued to keep his hands in his pockets and looked at him without any emotion. He looked at the monument again and asked a question, Is this glowing monument also a holy treasure? This continued to emit a golden glow spreading throughout the atmosphere. Zhu Han put his hands to his chin and rubbed it, thinking he didn't know about this in his previous life. He looked ahead gloomily and began to think further. When he saw this stone, he felt that something was wrong. He continued to peer forward carefully. Lion Shu instructively put his finger forward and explained that this stone glowed yesterday. He said that the treasure was inside it and would appear soon. He straightened his shoulders smugly and looked at Zhu Han. Lion Shu looked at the monument and the high-ranking people nearby explained that only three people were as strong as Lu Yunzi. He added that they were lucky to get the best positions. They all have a high rank, and no one will dare to contradict them. Suddenly the monument flashed with bright light. It happened suddenly and very quickly. A guy with black eyes and small horns on his forehead exclaimed in delight that this had appeared. Several more men pointed at this with their hands, smiling in surprise. People with wings shouted for it to be taken away quickly. Many people with wings flew to the monument, holding weapons in their hands. Other people without wings began to run to the hill where the monument stood. Having good superpowers, people jumped over this and tried to make their way to the monument. A guy dressed in white and black kimonos swung his sword blade at the mighty bull king and exclaimed, Even if they are on the list of the strongest, no one can handle so many people. Another guy with a mohawk on his head swung his spear at the body of the mighty bull, shouting angrily to be killed. The mighty bull froze in place, not moving at all. People are suddenly doomed that this is bad. The entire space began to be filled with the powerful aura of the mighty bull. People were screaming in panic and calling for help. The aura continued to spread throughout the atmosphere, but not over a long distance. The mighty bull clenched his teeth angrily, exhaled angrily, and shouted, Whoever dares to approach the treasure will die. He put his hands forward threateningly, getting into a comfortable position for a fight. Zhu Han and Lion Shu stood below and looked at the top of the cliff, where there was an oval-shaped golden stone. A magical glow emanated from the stone, which painted everything around in rainbow colors. Many cultivators were approaching this in hopes of finding the treasure. 
Lion Shu anxiously asked, shouldn't they hurry up? Zhu Han soared up and said to wait here, he will take care of it. Zhu Han quickly walked towards the stone, keeping his hands in his trouser pockets. Lu Yunzi saw him and asked in surprise, Zhu Han. He, not paying attention to her, stood and carefully examined the sculpture. Zhu Han worriedly thought that there was really something wrong with this stone. Lu Yunzi said, she knows he is strong, but this fight is on a completely different level. She warns him like a classmate. Zhu Han turned his head towards her, smiled joyfully, and showed her an approving gesture by raising his thumb up. He said with a laugh that he agreed with the words of the class leader. Zhu Han said that he would be back soon and walked away. Lu Yunzi, with her hands on her hips, asked puzzledly, Why is he so happy? Is there something wrong there? Zhu Han passed by Lian Shu and walked further away from this place. Lian Shu looked after him in surprise and asked, Is he leaving? Zhu Han, without stopping, turned his head towards him and confidently said that the real treasure was not here, it was a bait. He calmly added that the entire area would be destroyed. Lion Shu opened his mouth in surprise and exclaimed. He was dumbfounded and asked the question, how is this? Zhu Han continued to walk and thought that Lion Shu was greedy and not afraid to die, although he advised him to leave, but as a cultivator. It took effort and courage to take such risks. He then thought of Lu Yunzi, imagining her image in his mind. She just couldn't miss such a good opportunity. Zhu Han pondered, asking himself puzzledly, since the Jai Xu and Mayo tree is not here, where is it? Lion Shu followed behind him, crossing his arms across his chest in irritation. He said displeasedly that everyone was gathered here. He can't leave it like that. At this time, the Feng family stood aside. Uncle Lai said that now is the time they need to go. Feng Jinyu frowned and said through gritted teeth that he wanted to watch this bunch of idiots die. Zhu Han stopped with a puzzled look and said that he forgot something. Lion Shu, who was following him, also stopped and looked at him in surprise. Zhu Han frowned and said that Jai Chuan Mayo is part of the sacred treasure. He had already heard about this somewhere. The birth of this requires sacrifice, can it be? Zhu Han looked back in alarm and saw a red energy dome form with a loud sound above the rock where all the cultivators were located. The cultivators looked up and began to ask questions, dumbfounded. What is this? One of them said with concern that it looked like something bad was happening. One of the cultivators, a man with large white wings, tried to break through this red dome, but he failed. The dome threw him back down with force. He fell to the ground. The cultivator with large white wings looked up with one eye and said with alarm that this was bad. He added that they are trapped, they can't get out of here. Lu Yunzi looked up at the dome and thought that it was quite a large magical weapon. It caught everyone here. Zyman Kin stood next to her and looked up in surprise. Suddenly there was a crash. The golden stone began to become covered with cracks. After some time, an explosion occurred. The golden stone shattered into small stones that scattered in all directions. In place of this, there was a large bomb. The cultivators stepped back in fear and looked at this in bewilderment. The mighty bull king, a cultivator wearing a fur coat with horns on his head, asked in horror, What is this? The blue-haired cultivator, silver wings of the god of war, answered in fear that it was a nuclear bomb. There was a timer on this one that showed five minutes until the explosion. The countdown has begun. Zhu Han looked up at what was happening and thought how predictable they first lured everyone to one place using the statue. The magic weapons were then activated to catch the cultivators. After that, they used a nuclear bomb. They decided to kill all the cultivators with an open attack. The Jai Xuan Mayo tree needs the blood of cultivators for it to awaken. He looked from the side at Tai Handing Mountain, where the cultivators were trapped. He thought that it was immediately clear that this was all planned in advance. Kill all the cultivators at once and take the treasure. Zhu Han frowned angrily and thought that these people had planned everything well. At this time, cheerful laughter was heard. Below, to the side stood Feng Zhenyu, who warmly extended his arms to the sides and happily asked how the cultivators were feeling. He cheerfully said that now their blood will help the tree appear. The Feng family members stood behind him and smiled maliciously. Feng Zhenyu, his eyes sparkling happily, solemnly announced that after this they would die. No one would be able to take the treasure. The cultivators who were trapped looked at him angrily. One of them shouted threateningly that Feng Zhenyu would not get away with this. Another cultivator asked anxiously, Are the Feng family members abnormal? The cultivators rushed towards the energy dome and tried to use their power to destroy it. They shouted angrily, How dare he? Let him hurry up and release them. At this time, standing aside, Feng Zhenyu was watching them. 
he crossed his arms and said smugly, in order to carry out his plan, he had already used the Feng family's magic weapon. Feng Zhenyu asked mockingly, do they still think they can get out of there? This bomb will kill them all. He mockingly said that they would die today. He should. Let them just watch the Fung family take the treasure. No one will be able to defuse the bomb. The timer showed that there were 4 minutes and 26 seconds left before the explosion. Feng Zhenyu, who was standing below, looked up at the mountain with the cultivators trapped and solemnly announced that he would give them a chance. If they swear on blood that they will join his family, he will spare them. Feng Zhenyu said that they have less than 5 minutes to think or the bomb will blow them up. He then looked at Lu Yunzi. She looked at him worriedly. Feng Jinyu asked how she was. He mockingly said that he had a wonderful proposal for her. Feng Jinyu touched his chest with his hand, pointing at himself, and said smugly, if she marries him, he will spare her. Lu Yunzi looked at him and said that he was too arrogant. She asked him in surprise, does Feng Jinyu think he deserves her? Lu Yunzi held a magical weapon in her hands. She accelerated and quickly flew up to the dome, thinking that Feng Jinyu forced her to use a magic weapon. Otherwise, she doesn't want to die because of this nuclear bomb. Lu Yunzi tried to thrust the magic weapon into the dome, but it pushed her away. She flew down. Lu Yunzi landed on her feet and looked up in surprise. She thought that the Feng family's barrier was very strong. Mm. Feng Zhenyu watched her actions with a smile and said that it was useless. Let her think carefully about his proposal. If she spends the night with him, he will spare her. Lu Yunzi, not paying attention to his words, resolutely said that she would try again. She sped up, holding out a golden-colored magic sword in front of her. Using enormous force, Lu Yunzi slammed her sword into the barrier. There was a crash. Well, this created small cracks. Lu Yunzi coughed exhaustedly, covering her mouth with her hand. Drops of blood appeared on her palm. She thought that the magic weapon was regenerating. Lu Yunzi realized that she could not break it. Wiping the blood from her chin, she decided to attack again until the barrier was restored. Feng Jinyu impatiently spread his arms to the sides and shouted that three minutes had already passed. He gave her a chance, don't blame him. Zhu Han's voice was heard, saying that he wanted to ask Feng Jinyu something. Feng Jinyu looked back in surprise and asked what. He said dissatisfiedly that Zhu Han was an idiot. He was lucky that he didn't hit the barrier. Now he can't leave here. Feng Jinyu asked a question, does he want to die? Zhu Han calmly replied that he had misunderstood him. He just wanted to ask, how did his Feng family know that the Jai Chu and Mayo tree needed a blood sacrifice? Feng Zhenyu stared at him in shock, his mouth open. The cultivators inside their trap asked in shock, blood sacrifice. Angry shouts were heard from the barrier that Feng Zhenyu was crazy. One of the cultivators asked a question in fear, did he really want to kill them? A cry was heard that he did not want to die. Feng Zhenyu clenched his fists angrily and roared that no one had asked them. Just let them die quickly. Feng Jenyu asked himself in surprise, how did Zhu Han know about the blood sacrifice? It was a great secret. Only a small part of his family knows this. There shouldn't have been other people knowing this secret. Zhu Han, watching his reaction, realized that he had guessed right. The Feng family is not that simple, but he cares about who he is. No one will stop him. Feng Jenyu approached Uncle Lai and asked him to kill Zhu Han. He didn't like him. Uncle Lai stood silently with his eyes closed. Lu Yunzi looked in their direction in shock and asked, Is this the elder? She walked to the edge of the mountain, looked down where Zhu Han and Lian Shu were standing, and shouted in alarm for Zhu Han to run. This person from the Feng clan will easily kill him. Lu Yunzi added anxiously that this elder should not be underestimated. He is at the final stage of the foundation. Zhu Han asked her in surprise, Why pay attention to such a small thing? He assured that the old man would not do anything to him. Lu Yunzi said indignantly that he was overestimating himself. She just warned, the old man will easily teach him a lesson. Zhu Han answered hesitantly, okay. Old man Lai landed on the grass next to him. His white robes evolved. He stood with his eyes closed and his hand holding his staff. Old man Lai said threateningly, if Zhu Han wants to die so badly, then he will help him. If he kills himself now, his body will be intact. If not, he will disappear. Zhu Han looked indifferently at old man Lai, who stood so self-righteously in front of him. Lai and Shu fearfully stood still, afraid to move. He, stuttering with fear, said that this old man was very strong. Lai and Shu grabbed his chest with his hand and anxiously added that he could feel it. Zhu Han turned to him and asked, is he afraid? 
Lion Shu indignantly said that he would follow him even to the ends of the earth. Zhu Han smiled mockingly and said ironically, of course. He threw a bazooka into Lion Shu's hands. He looked at the weapon in shock. Zhu Han held a second bazooka on his shoulder and showed off a small yellow bag boastfully. He cheerfully thought that he was just using Long Bao Chan missiles. Old Man Lai became nervous and asked if he would use a firearm against a cultivator. He pitifully told Lion Shu to listen to his conscience, he is an old man. Lion Shu quickly loaded his weapon and shouted angrily that naturally he would shoot, especially at him. When the rocket was already approaching him, leaving a trail of fire in the air, Old Man Lai asked, Lion Shu thinks he is afraid of this weapon. Old Man Lai crouched down, spread his arms to the sides and prepared for this attack. There was a powerful explosion. Old Man Lai created an energy barrier around himself and hid under it. Old Man Lai shouted angrily, how dare he? He rose to his feet, opened his eyes wide and shouted angrily, the cultivator is using a firearm. The white clothes he was wearing became like rags. Old Man Lai, leaning on his staff, angrily said that he would kill him now. Lion Shu took aim and pulled the trigger again, firing a missile. He indignantly asked the question, they themselves used a nuclear bomb, what are the claims against them? The rocket was approaching Old Man Lai very quickly. He looked at this excitedly and angrily said that he would kill him. Old Man Lai activated his spiritual power. Rays of golden light emanated from his body. There was a powerful explosion. Zhu Han leaned his hand on his weapon and looked at the flames. Lion Shu stood in the grass on one knee and prepared for the next shot. An old man's hand appeared from the fire. He said weakly that Lion Shu really dared to attack him with this weapon. When the flames died down, Old Man Lai could be seen lying helplessly on the green grass. He weakly exhaled gray smoke through his mouth. The cultivators were watching them from behind the barrier. One of them asked in surprise, did he succeed? Then he said that this is impossible because this old man is in the final stage. Another cultivator replied that this old man was very famous. He killed from a young age, but now he died from a simple missile attack. The cultivators looked down on the body of a helpless old man who showed no signs of life. They said it really happened. Lu Yunzi sighed in disappointment. She didn't think that Zhu Han would use such a method. Feng Jenyu looked at the body worriedly and said dumbfoundedly, Uncle. Then he angrily shouted that Zhu Han was challenging his family. He won't let him harm the Feng family. He angrily demanded that Zhu Han apologize now. There was a powerful explosion, illuminating everything around and turning it red and yellow. Lion Shu held a bazooka in his hand and smiled charmingly. He said, what kind of idiot talks to Brother Zhu like that? Lion Shu grabbed the second bazooka. He held it in his hands and said enthusiastically that this is a very good weapon. He defeated him. Feng Zhenyu held his bloody face with one hand. His clan members worriedly asked if he was okay. Can they help him? Feng Zhenyu covered one eye with his bloody hand and asked angrily, how dare he? Many more shots rang out and rockets flew towards the Feng clan, leaving long red trails behind them. After some time, two smoking bazookas lay on the ground. Lion Shu, leaning on his weapon, looked at the scorched earth in front of him. The bodies of the Feng clan lay motionless there. Lion Shu asked a question, how does he like his rocket? Feng Zhenyu sat on the ground, leaning his back on a large gray stone, and holding his stomach with his hand, said angrily, he still shot. His white clothes turned into torn rags. He furrowed his brows angrily and looked at Lion Shu. There was a shot and then an explosion. Lion Shu asked in surprise, is he still talking so much? He added menacingly, then get more. An exhausted Feng Jinyu stood on all fours in front of him. He raised his head and through tears asked not to shoot anymore. Feng Jinyu waved his hands in fear and said that this won't happen again. The timer on the bomb showed that there were 30 seconds left before the explosion. The cultivators shouted in horror that in 30 seconds the nuclear bomb would explode. They rushed towards the barrier, trying to break through it with their weapons. The cultivators asked for help. One of them shouted for Feng Zhenyu to let them out. Zhu Han pointed the barrel of the bazooka at Feng Zhen's head and menacingly announced that he was giving him five seconds to defuse the bomb. He helplessly raised his hands up and excitedly told them all to calm down and listen to him. Once a nuclear bomb is activated, it cannot be neutralized. Zhu Han stepped on his head with his black booted foot and forcefully pushed his face into the ground. He angrily said to Feng Zhenyu to tell him how to turn off this magic weapon. Zhu Han angrily said that he was counting to five, and if he didn't do anything, he would kill him. Zhu Han started counting down. Zhu Han removed his foot. Feng Zhenyu stood up and cowardly shouted to wait. 
he will turn it off. A golden ticket floated into the air. This gave off a golden glow that opened the barrier. The cultivators looked up and shouted joyfully that it was opening. They shouted for everyone to run away quickly. The barrier slowly began to dissipate from above. The cultivators that had wings quickly took off and headed towards the exit. They shouted that they needed to leave quickly. They didn't have much time. There were other cultivators below who were unable to take off. They looked up doomedly. One of them desperately shouted for help. He couldn't fly. The mighty Bull King activated his spiritual power, causing him to glow with a blue glow and fly up. He angrily shouted to get out of his way. He violently threw the cultivators aside, clearing a path for himself. In front of him, the war god Silver Wings cultivator calmly flew and slowly rose up. Down on the mountain, the other cultivators seemed very small. Lu Yunzi floated in the air. Using her magic sword, she tied Pan Lion Lian and Zymon Kin together and dragged them up. Zymon Kin looked down in fear and shouted for Lady Lu to save them. The cultivators who remained standing below looked up in despair and begged for help. The timer showed that there were zero seconds left before the explosion. There was a very powerful explosion that destroyed the mountain. The whole earth in the area shook from this. Huge stones scattered to the sides. The surviving cultivators landed on the ground. Looking at the place where a nuclear explosion had just occurred, someone said sadly that so many people had died. The entire mountain was strewn with the bloody corpses of cultivators. Lion Shu, through tears, sadly asked the question, did everyone die? The silver wings of the war god replied indifferently that they were too weak and were not competitors to the people who came for the treasure. When they came here, they were ready to die. Lion Shu angrily pointed his finger at him and asked if there were too many details. Let him not forget, they were saved thanks to him, but what would have happened if they didn't have time? The silver wings of the god of war spread his wings, from which a magical glow emanated, and asked in surprise, Lion Shu thinks that he is like those weaklings. A nuclear bomb wouldn't even scratch it. He soared above the ground and confidently announced that he would take the hidden weapon. All four wings behind him glowed brightly with white light. He added, if Lion Shu betrays him, he will not be merciful. At this time, the ground where the blood of the cultivators had spilled began to glow. Pink luminous rays began to shoot out from the bowels of the earth. Someone shouted for everyone to look, because the tree was appearing. There was an explosion, the earth's crust collapsed, and a huge orange pillar of light soared up from the depths. Lu Yunzi said, after all, she must see what kind of treasure will appear here. Along with her, Zhu Han and the mighty ox king watched with interest as the magic tree appeared. When the pillar of light dissipated, everyone saw that a huge monster had emerged from the depths of the earth, with a magical tree growing on its head. The cultivators looked at this and asked in shock, Is this true? It's huge. Someone said that the holy treasure is right on the monster's head. Zhu Han looked forward carefully and thought in his mind, Jai Song Mayo has finally appeared. His jacket flew apart in the rising wind. Zhu Han thought that in his previous life, the emperor himself had fought to get it. He looked ahead, where a tree rose, surrounded by golden light and having thorns. From this came many sparks of different colors. The tree illuminated everything around it. Zhu Han thought, no one can even imagine the true value of this treasure. A tree with a golden glow flew straight towards the face of a huge brown dragon. The dragon's eyes shone with a bright yellow light. Its horns were red in color and curved closer to its mouth. A bitten tongue was sticking out of his mouth, and drool was dripping from it. The cultivator, the silver wings of the god of war, swung his wings majestically as he advanced towards the brown dragon. The mighty bull king pushed off the rock with his feet and shouted that he was coming. A barely noticeable blue color appeared from his movements, indicating his high rank. Lu Yunzi also began to run forward. Suddenly someone stopped her, holding her by the wrist. The hand continued to squeeze her wrist in a tight grip, and the owner of it shouted, No! Lu Yunzi looked at him in shock, no longer moving forward. She shouted to Zhu Han to go together. She immediately added, or let him just let her go. Her hair flowed smoothly in the wind. Zhu Han frowned and, still holding her wrist with his hand, said that it was useless to go there now because this giant had frightening strength. Lu Yunzi looked at him in surprise, without moving at all. Zhu Han continued at this time that these people would not harm him. At this time, the dragon's mouth swelled very much. The tree, which continues to be on the dragon's forehead, brightly illuminated the dragon's scales. Suddenly the dragon began to release something from its mouth with a strange sound. It was a bright green liquid. 
the mighty Bull King, continuing to push forward through the liquid and protecting himself with his skills, shouted that this was bad. He immediately added that it was dangerous. The silver wings of the God of War, protecting himself with his wings, shouted for them to run. The green liquid continued to spread in almost all directions, splashing nearby rocks. Silver Wings' God of War frowned and gritted his teeth as he said, he never thought it would be a giant. The green liquid bounced off of him, not touching his body at all. This was due to his good and high rank. Behind him, wearily and purposefully, the mighty king of the bulls made his way. He said nothing and looked ahead exhaustedly. He filtered the silver wings of the god of war through his teeth so that they would finish off the giant with one blow. The silver wings of the war god and the mighty bull king simultaneously pushed off the ground, leaping forward. The mighty bull king gritted his teeth angrily and said, at first he did not see his strength. He looked ahead dumbfounded and asked the question, was he really already at the stage of legendary purification? Next to him, the sky seemed to sparkle with lightning and sparks. Lu Yunzi looked forward in surprise. She asked again, the legendary cleansing. She stood still, not moving anywhere. A barely noticeable golden glow emanated from her body. Zhu Han remembered the man standing in a rich kimono and thought, this is a power equal to the power of the gods. His light aura flew next to the man's body. Only the first patriarch of the Lu family can match this strength. Zhu Han looked at the dragon, who was moving his tongue quickly. A lot of drool flowed from the tongue, dripping onto the ground. Zhu Han still held Lu Yunzi's wrist and said, This dragon was a president, not a person. He explained, looking at the dragon, It is a giant that guards a sacred treasure. Just ahead of them stood the silver wings of the god of war and the mighty bull king. They weren't moving anywhere else. Zuhan admitted at this time, he is afraid that no one will get it. The dragon closed his eyes, continuing to bite his tongue. Zuhan looked at the tree that was on the dragon's forehead and thought, the strength of this giant is difficult to imagine. He suggested that most likely no one on earth would be able to hit this giant. Zuhan remembered, from the very beginning of the Jai Tree, Song Mayo could not be obtained by force. Zuhan looked forward confidently and resolutely thought that they should wait for the right moment. Lu Yunzi looked at him with confusion and said with embarrassment, okay? She immediately reminded him that he could let go of her hand. Zuhan tightened his body while continuing to hold Lu Yunzi's hand. A barely noticeable pink blush appeared on his face from awkwardness. He looked at his hand, squeezing hers. Zuhan suddenly pulled his hand away from hers and shamefully said that he forgot. His cheeks still continued to turn rosy due to his extreme embarrassment. The dragon began to climb the mountain with its paws and pulled out its huge tongue, waving it. Smoke came out of his nostrils abundantly, spreading through the air. Golden sparks emanated from the monster in all directions, indicating its strong aura. Hanging above the monster's head was a tree that had the same aura as the dragon. The mighty bull king looked at the dragon rising towards them and asked the question, what type of holy treasure is this? He shared his opinion that it looks like a small tree. It was no surprise to him that everything was behind him. Strange long hairs stretched across the dragon's belly, looking like tree branches. The silver wings of the war god looked at the monster standing in front of them in shock. He opened his mouth in shock and said that it was a very strong giant who was guarding this. Silver Wings' god of war explained that this was very unexpected. The mighty bull king looked ahead in shock. The silver wings of the god of war were added at this time. There is no other explanation for the fact that there were two great masters here. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Long Bao Chan pressed his hand to his chest and said out loud, he has been feeling unbearable pain all over his body for several days now. He added that he would never want to be in a situation like Aoshin. Behind his back were two powerful wings that had a white tint. Long Bao Tian continued to press his hand to his chest and exclaimed, let him just wait for him. Some time later, something similar to a technical apparatus was flying overhead. A voice was heard from there that told them to get rid of everyone. The same voice added that Xunwu's company is taking everything. Many drones flew near the dragon, one of which had a voice saying, also let them kill if necessary. The same voice added, let them kill everyone who tries to escape. The drones continued to fly at high speed towards the mighty bull king and towards the war god Silver Wings Cultivator. The mighty bull king looked up in shock and asked the question, why are they here? He continued to look forward and asked the question again, should they have only sent two of them to help? The Silver Wings of the God of War stood dumbfounded in place, not moving. Silver Wings God of War frowned, thinking that the asset price had risen sharply. 
He said with a hunch that this was what brought them here. A slightly noticeable snow-white glow emanated from his wings. Lion Shu found himself next to the embarrassed Zhu Han. He pointed his finger down and addressed Zhu Han, saying that Xuan Wu was a biotech company. He added, continuing to look towards where the mighty bull king stood, and said that they were very strong. The silver wings of the god of war also stood, motionless and looking forward. Lion Shu admitted he never thought they would come. He imagined a huge blue tower rising into the night sky, on which one could see the sun and many other stars with planets. The blue tower was surrounded by a huge transparent ball, which had poles like the world in a reduced form. Lion Shu explained, the bull king and silver wings work for them. Suddenly, a man in a long black cloak and a white suit appeared among the drones. He had rockets mounted on his back to help him stay in the air for long periods of time. The man raised his hand up and shouted for the drones to target the creature and then shoot. He looked forward carefully with his one eye, which remained intact after many battles. The man lowered his hand forward, pointing his finger, and shouted at the helicopters to attack faster. The helicopters fired several missiles, rushing forward at high speed. The dragon looked carefully at the missiles approaching him. The missiles moved at high speed closer and closer to the mouth of the dragon, which continued to bite its tongue. Suddenly, bombs began to be cut into the dragon's body one after another, creating a strong smoke. The dragon's tongue hung lifelessly from its mouth. Lion Shu looked forward with an admiring smile and exclaimed that these missiles were much stronger than them. Zhu Shan looked in his direction with confusion, without answering. Lion Shu suddenly exclaimed, It looks like it worked. The dragon bit his tongue furiously. He frowned with his yellow eyes and immediately looked forward. Dense smoke emanated from the dragon's body. Zhu Shan thought for a moment and suggested that this time he would have to play with them. He smiled smugly. The man descended from the air as fast as he could. Lu Yunzi stood in front and watched him without any emotion. The man asked a question, didn't he say to stay put? He muttered through his teeth, looking ahead menacingly, calling on the mighty bull king and the silver wings of the god of war to hurry up and kill them. The silver wings of the god of war flew up and threateningly spread his arms to the sides. He turned to Lu Yunzi and said that this was Kangxi. A snow-white light emanated from his wings, and he said that the treasure was almost with him. Lion Shu looked up in surprise, spreading his legs to the sides. Silver Wings of the God of War asked everyone below and watching him, Can they leave? Suddenly, someone swung a blue, sharpened sword blade. It flew through the atmospheric air at full speed, accompanied by a barely noticeable sound. Lu Yunzi put the zigza shaped dagger forward and asked again, Should she leave? She firmly stated that she would beat him. Silver Wings' God of War glanced sideways in her direction and exclaimed, let them give Lu Yunzi to them, and they will not touch the rest. The mighty bull king looked ahead menacingly, not doing anything yet. Suddenly, after a while, he brought his two fists together. A golden glow immediately followed from his hands. The eyes of the mighty bull king lit up with a bright green light, and he looked forward warily. Suddenly, he separated his fists and extended his arms to the sides. A golden glow began to emanate from the body of the mighty bull king, indicating his strong aura. He gritted his teeth and looked up. The silver wings of the god of war stood emotionlessly in the middle of the field and exclaimed for them to start and show them what they are capable of. The mighty bull king activated his spiritual energy. Golden energy began to emanate from his powerful body in large waves. Pan Lionlian and Zymon Kin ran away in fear. Pan Lionlian ran behind him and begged Lady Lu to help. Zymon Kin ran first and cried like a child. Tears streamed down his cheeks. Through sobs, he asked Madame Lu to come to the rescue. He shouted that the Ox King is a master from the Kingjin list. Lion Shu stood in front of the Ox King, held a bazooka on his shoulder, closed one eye and took aim. He gritted his teeth resolutely and said that those on the ranking list, they would destroy everyone. A shot rang out and the missile flew straight towards the head of the mighty Bull King and exploded. The Bull King's head was engulfed in flames. From this blow, he flew a little to the side and stayed on his feet. The Bull King was alive and well, with clouds of grey smoke emanating from his unharmed forehead. He asked smugly, Does Lion Shu think that he can handle him as well as Feng Jenya? The Ox King said that it seems that Lion Shu still doesn't know that he has the strongest defense. The missiles won't even scratch it. Lion Shu widened his eyes in fear and hesitantly asked Brother Zhu what should they do. 
He repeated excitedly that the Bull King has strong defense. The missiles will not harm him. Zhu Han looked at him calmly and told him to run. Lion Shu looked at him in surprise and asked what? Zhu Han looked forward resolutely and stretched his fists, preparing for battle. He calmly said that Lion Shu could not cope with him and let him run. Lion Shu, without thinking twice, turned around and ran away. He shouted as he ran, okay. The mighty Bull King activated his spiritual energy and channeled it into his fist. His fist was surrounded by blue energy rings, the light of which turned everything blue. The Ox King frowned and said threateningly that Zhu Han looked happy and would be the first one he killed today. He reported because it wouldn't hurt him in any way. Zhu Han flashed his eyes in anticipation and poured his spiritual energy into his fist. A golden glow appeared around his hand and golden energy rings formed. He raised his hand and confidently said that everything would be the other way around. The Ox King and Zhu Han charged, approaching each other. Their spiritual forces came into conflict. The Ox King's blue aura and Zhu Han's golden aura formed a large ball of energy. They stood inside this ball, trying to break each other's defenses. After some time, the golden spiritual power transformed into lightning. Lightning struck the Ox King's hand, turning his bones into brittle coals. The Ox King was pushed back with speed by the golden aura and flew back. He fell to the ground and screamed in pain. Zhu Han showed off his hand, glowing with a golden glow, and joyfully said that it seemed that he had won because he had caused a lot of damage. At this time, Lion Shu was running and shouting that he needed to run faster. He looked back to see what was happening and asked, dumbfounded how. Lion Shu stopped and saw Zhu Han standing calmly and looking at the defeated Bull King, who was emitting clouds of smoke. The Bull King lay on the ground and bowed his head dejectedly. Lion Shu asked in surprise, what happened? Did they overthrow the Bull King? A single tear of joy slid down his cheek. The Ox King, clutching his injured hand, said displeasedly that this was impossible, his defense was the strongest. He asked the question, how did Zhu Han break his arm with a simple push? At the same time, white feathers were flying in the sky in all directions. Lu Yunzi reported that the fight with Silver Wings was almost over. She soared in the sky above the silver wings and brandished her magical weapon. She wounded him in the arm and blood sprayed from his wound. The wounded silver wings shouted, his hand. Silver wings are forced to fall down. He looked at Lu Yunzi with big blue eyes. Blood appeared from his mouth. A realization struck him. Silver wings said that she had been hiding her power all this time. Lu Yunzi sank to the ground and replied that she was not hiding like a weakling compared to him. She added that Silver Wings doesn't even deserve to see her full power. In front of her, someone landed noisily, raising clouds of dust with their feet in white boots. Standing in front of Lu Yunzi was a huge Kung Shi. He was almost twice her height. His arms and shoulders were made of silver-colored metal. On Kung Shi's shoulders, the jet engines with which he flew burned with a bright flame. He said that they really are weaklings, and how about fighting him? Lu Yunzi looked at him in surprise and said that the first rule of Suen Wu is to reach the peak of the foundation stage. She carefully looked at his aura and said that, however, after Sun Wu, the body is transformed and his strength has already reached the Dan Kai stage. Kung Shi extended his hand to her and said with a satisfied smile that she knows quite a lot about them. Then he added that if she didn't want to die, she should go with him and not cause him unnecessary problems. Lu Yunzi pulled out her magic weapon, which glowed with a blue light, and said that it was quite strong compared to the people of Nandao City. She crossed her arms and said decisively that she had probably never seen anyone stronger than him, but she still wanted to fight him. Her eyes were full of determination, and rays of aura emanated from her body. Kung Shi frowned at her and said that she didn't even understand the basics. He raised his hand, waved it, and smiled smugly, saying that now the Lu family wouldn't say anything to him because he was giving her a chance. A bright flame flared up behind him. He sent a wave of fire towards her, but Lu Yunzi flew up and dodged the attack. Kung Shi looked up and said ironically that she was able to dodge it. Lu Yunzi activated her spiritual energy using the magic sword. Blue energy waves began to glow around her hand. She said that the transformed body expends a huge amount of energy and brings a little discomfort. Lu Yunzi directed her energy towards his fiery one. He hit her with a fireball attack and shouted for everyone to attack. They must get this mystic level tree. At this time, the monster began to stir. Gunshots rang out. There were many helicopters flying in the air, firing rockets. One helicopter fired six missiles at a time. Many rockets were flying in the sky, leaving streaks of fire behind them. 
These missiles were directed towards the monster on which the magical tree grew. Zhu Hong looked at this and thought, bad, Kung Shu will only anger the monster even more. As the missiles approached the monster, it created a protective barrier around itself. Zhu Han thought that this monster was saving energy to attack. These people are really stupid. The monster pressed its paws into the ground, opened its mouth, and released a huge, hot column of fire. Kung Shi looked up and cursed furiously. He angrily said that five of their helicopters were destroyed. Kung Shi angrily asked how did he do it. He resolutely stated that he would deal with Lu Yunzi first, and then take the holy treasure from the monster. Kung Shi turned his head towards Lu Yunzi and slyly said that Madame Lu was very talented. If they had met a few years later, she would have been able to deal with him, but now she is no match for him. Kung Shi decisively stepped forward, clenched his fists and tried to attack her, but Lu Yunzi resisted him with her magic sword, which she held in front of her with both hands. The sword hit the metal hand loudly. Kung Shi angrily announced through clenched teeth that he would show her his transformed body. He extended his hand forward, tensed, and energy rings appeared around his hand and rotated rapidly. His body began to change. Kung Shi proudly appeared in front of Lu Yunzi. He was completely covered with stone armor, from which stone spikes protruded. Kung Shi smugly announced that his body was now transformed. A fiery aura glowed around him. Lu Yunzi looked at him in surprise and thought sadly that Kung Shi's cultivation level was great. She thought with fear that after the transformation, he was at the final stage of the foundation. Blue Yunzi thought sadly, if not for his cultivation level. She sadly realized that she did not want to die. Kung Shi swung his huge hand covered in stone armor and announced that he would simply attack first. Lu Yunzi stepped back in fear. At this time, the monster's huge, red tongue slowly began to descend from its mouth towards them. Lu Yunzi turned to him, looked up at the huge monster and said, This is bad. Zhu Han noticed that the monster was preparing to attack and worriedly thought that it was time to fight the monster. Zhu Han knew that this was a chance to take away the holy treasure. But there is one circumstance. He thought about Lu Yunzi and quickly ran. Zhu Han activated his magical energy and flew up. Zhu Han instantly blocked Lu Yunzi with his body from Kung Shi's strike. Zhu Han thought indignantly that he couldn't believe he was doing this. Lu Yunzi asked in shock, Zhu Han. She looked at him in surprise, not believing her eyes. Kung Shi hit Zhu Han powerfully, but he activated his defense. Kung Shi's attack did not damage him. He asked angrily, Is Zhu Han stupid? Kung Shi angrily announced that he attacked with all his might to deal with Lu Yunzi. Zhu Han picked up the huge red tongue of the monster and began to lift it up. Lu Yunzi flew back in fear. Zhu Han shouted out excitedly that despite all this, he was being attacked by a giant monster. The monster, a huge toad, pulled its tongue back into its mouth, joyfully bulged its eyes, and noisily released air through a burp, raising pillars of dust. Lion Shu's eyes widened in shock and his mouth gaped in surprise. He cried out in despair, Brother Zhu. Lu Yunzi looked at the monster sadly and said that Zhu Han saved her. She resolutely declared that for his sake she would kill this monster. She looked at the monster and wondered why he did this. Kung Shi looked at his hand, from which pieces of stone armor had fallen off, and said in surprise, How is this possible? Its strength is equal to the base peak stage. He asked himself in surprise, Why is this giant defense so strong? Kung Shi looked at his injured arm in despair and sadly thought that his arm would break if he hit Zhu Han. After some time, on one of the beautiful sunny days, in a house with rich and beautiful furnishings, someone said that the Feng family would soon be in power. Feng Zhen sat in the chair, leaning on the armrests and rubbing his hands in anticipation. Feng Zhen, Feng Zhenya's father, had no doubt that the entire city would soon become the enemy of the Feng family. He confidently added that this is not surprising. The two front doors swung open and sunlight poured into the room. Someone from the doorway told the gentleman that there was bad news. A blonde man in a dark blue suit said in alarm that the young master was attacked by someone and everything did not go according to plan. Fang Zhen jumped to his feet and asked, Dumbfounded, what? How did this happen? Wasn't he with that person? Fang Zhen presented the image of old man Lai and said that he was very strong, who defeated him. Was it a master stronger than him? The blonde man in the suit spread his hands in despair and replied that the young master was defeated with a rocket. He added in despair that none of the attackers were masters. He added that they are just two children. Feng Zhen furrowed his brows in shock and gaped his mouth. The blonde man in the suit continued that they used missiles to defend against Lao Gong Feng and Feng Zhenyu. Feng Zhen grabbed his heart and winced in pain. 
He anxiously ordered the blonde man in the suit to hurry up and send people there. They cannot allow the holy treasure to fall into the hands of others. Then, holding his heart, he added that he should take care of those two immediately. When the blonde man in a suit left to carry out orders, Feng Zhen held his head and excitedly recalled the image of a man in a dark cloak. He asked himself with fear, what should he do? If he doesn't get the treasure, he will be angry with their family. Three days ago, the monster toad was sleeping calmly among the trees, with flocks of white birds circling above it. Suddenly, the monster toad opened its eyes and vomited. Zuhan fell out of her mouth along with saliva and vomit. He, tortured, lay on the grass in a puddle of vomit from which a foul stench emanated. He sighed with relief, spat out green liquid from his mouth, and said that he had done it. He immediately thought that this was truly disgusting. He had been in this monster for too long and had seen all of its food. Suddenly the monster toad lit up with a golden glow and flew up. Zhu Han fearfully created a yellow-red energy protection around himself. He asked a question in fear, has the giant left? Zhu Han thought that this giant had the right to be called invincible. Jai Song Mayo cannot be taken away. The only way to become a snack for him. If he had not taken this chance, Lu Yunzi might have taken the treasure. But now he has finally taken the treasure. Zhu Han held a small tree in his palm, from which a golden-colored magical glow emanated. After some time, Zhu Han sat on the grass in the lotus position and enthusiastically admired the magical tree that hovered in the air and glowed with golden light. Zhu Han suspected that Lu Yunzi was hiding his identity. According to his past life, he has little time. He remembered the bloody Lu Yunzi lying in the blood-red grass. She was killed, and the nine-branch tree was stolen. In the end, the magic tree fell into the hands of Emperor Zun. Otherwise, with Lu Yunzi's talent and the nine-branch tree, she would not be able to maintain her anonymity. He remembered that many hands would strive to obtain the magic tree. But Zhu Han had already saved her. Without the magic tree, her life would not be in danger. A magical tree, only the emperor knew about it. Zhu Han also found a piece of broken stone pill. This could violate the rules. Zhu Han is obliged to get it, but first he needs to wait and let the magic tree grow and bloom, and only then take the fruit. To unleash these abilities, the magic tree requires a huge amount of Kai energy, and this is not so easy. Fortunately, he has restored his aura to the initial stage. He must pay special attention to this and do everything in order. Zhu Han watched with interest as the magic tree rotated clockwise and floated in the air. The glow from this drew a golden spiral in the air. Zhu Han happily thought that one day the nine-branch tree would grow, bloom, and bear fruit after some time in the city. Zhu Han walked down the street with his hands in his trouser pockets. Thinking that the nine-branch tree had already been found, he should see Lao Er. She is at the university. There he met her in a past life. When he approached the beautiful golden-colored multi-story building, he thought enthusiastically that this was one of the best schools in all of China, Qingbei University. Zhu Han walked calmly through the schoolyard as two students looked at him in surprise. They whispered quietly. One asked, is this him? Another replied, it looks like him. After a while, Zhu Han opened the door. There was a sudden silence when he entered the classroom. His classmates looked at him in shock, with their eyes and mouths wide open. Zhu Han asked worriedly, did something happen? Why are they all looking at him like that? The blonde classmate looked at him dumbfounded, and then turned around and quickly ran out of the classroom, screaming, he shouted to Mrs. Lu that Zhu Han was not dead. He ran out of the classroom, turned around and ran down the corridor, shouting that Zhu Han was still alive, he was back. After ten minutes in the schoolyard, Zhu Han asked in surprise. She said that someone took a video of a giant toad eating him. He then sadly added that he posted it on the internet. Zhu Han asked again, is he now on all the headlines? Lu Yunzi looked at him in disbelief and remained silent. Zhu Han asked a question, now everyone in Nandao City thinks that he was eaten by a toad? Lu Yunzi said that not only that, after he was eaten by the toad, it ran away and disappeared. Now everyone is looking for him and the toad. Zhu Han sadly reported that he knew. He turned around and walked away from her. Lu Yunzi shouted out the question with excitement, that day why did he save her? Zhu Han replied with a charming smile that they were classmates, he couldn't just leave without helping her. As Zhu Han walked towards the door, Lu Yunzi suggested that if he wanted, she would recommend him to the Lu family. With such a big status, no one in the city would dare to go against him. Zhu Han, without turning around or slowing down, raised his hand in protest and said that he understands this, if she wants to repay him, then she needs to be stronger. 
Zhu Han thought that strangely Lu Yunzi did not ask him about the toad or the magic tree. It looked like the Lu family was not like other shameless families. Lu Yunzi shouted after him that he shouldn't be so willful. The magic tree is not a small treasure. Large families will definitely ask him where the nine branch tree is. Zhu Han took a step forward indifferently. Lu Yunzi shouted that he had better think about her proposal. Zhu Han turned around and smugly declared that let them come. If one comes, he will kill one. If two come, he will kill two. Lu Yunzi thought with irritation that she should not take care of him. Zhu Han himself will come to her as soon as he has problems. She will simply practice quietly after avoiding perfection for a long time. One day she broke through the natural base stage. She must reach the ninth grade level. Over time. First grade. The school teacher, a dark-haired man with a beard and glasses, said he assumed they had all noticed that the earth had changed. Most students have already taken part in this new world. In order to adapt to these changes, their school took special measures. The two dark-haired students listened to his speech smugly. Master continued, the cultivating disciples will separate and receive other lectures. They are the backbone of the country in the era of cultivation. He held up a piece of paper and showed it to everyone. There was something written on the sheet. The teacher said they would be tested within a month. Lu Yunzi crossed her arms and lowered her gaze. The school teacher said that the classes would be rearranged based on their cultivation levels. Zhu Han listened attentively, and the teacher continued that talented students will be sent to the advanced class, especially the outstanding ones will be able to skip school. They will immediately go to higher universities in the future. Zhu Han sat and looked out the window. He thought that Qingbei University had the right to become China's top cultivation university. Very few students entered there from other provinces. Nandao already has masters such as Lu Yunzi and Long Aoshin. Looking at Chuju, he was afraid that there were many hidden families growing up and coming to get into Lao or school. Zhu Han smiled and decided that he should speed up his cultivation and finish the perfect foundation as quickly as possible. After a while, Zhu Han walked out onto the school porch. Zhu Han slowly walked out of the school. He put his hands in his pockets and began to walk down the steps emotionlessly. Other students followed him, also putting their hands in their pockets. Suddenly, a cool black car at high speed suddenly braked in front of the king going to school. The front tires stopped spinning with a loud noise and smoke, stopping the car from moving. The headlights brightly illuminated the road ahead. As soon as the car stopped, a man in black pants and patent leather shoes began to get out, opening the door. The sun's rays reflected brightly from the car. The pure metal of the cool car reflected any glow. Feng Zhenyu furiously shouted at Zhu Han to get out. His arm was bandaged and supported by a special tripod to prevent the fracture from getting worse. Feng Zhenyu's head was bandaged and a bandage was stuck on his cheek. In addition to his head, his neck was bandaged. Behind him stood old man Lai, his head and eye bandaged. Feng Zhenyu clenched his fists furiously, looking forward. Zhu Han stopped without any emotion. He asked him a question, does he need something? Feng Zhenyu angrily shouted that this was nonsense. He indignantly added why his subordinate died, but his subordinate Zhu Han remained alive. He added demandingly that he wanted compensation. Feng Zhenyu remembered the deadly faces of Lian Shu and Zhu Han holding flare guns. He said that at Jinhai Canyon, Zhu Han and that little idiot Lian Shu were merciless. He imagined that red color was coming from their eyes, and the whites in their eyes were completely filled with black. Feng Zhenyu added that holding a rocket launcher was very impressive. Feng Zhenyu clenched his fist angrily and raised it, saying, Zhu Han said that he would chop them into mints and feed them to the dogs. Smoke seemed to be flying from him in all directions due to strong anger and rage. He immediately added that Zhu Han still had not apologized for this. He continued to wave his fist angrily, trying to prove something. Zhu Han ignored his angry state and asked him a question, where is Lion Shu? He asked again, did he find it? Undisguised concern was written on his face. Feng Zhenyu listened to him carefully. Zhu Han at this time remembered the cheerful and smiling Lion Shu resting his hands on his hips. He thought, knowing Lion Shu's character, he would immediately contact him. Zhu Han frowned and looked ahead, mentally asking a question. He didn't even write to him. Did this mean that he had gotten into something? Feng Zhenyu pointed his finger at Zhu Han and angrily shouted a question, does he have time to take care of others? He muttered through his teeth that he should take care of himself first. Behind him stood a lot of guys wearing glasses and black office suits with different colored ties. These were his assistants. 
Feng Zhenyu's tripod reflected the blue sky. Feng Zhenyu looked at the grinning Zhu Han standing among his assistants. He told him he dared to oppose the Feng family before, but now he doesn't have a rocket launcher. He angrily exclaimed that he would now watch him beat him. The girl with pink hair pointed her finger forward and said that it was Feng Zhenyu. She was explaining this to the green-haired guy standing next to her. They watched Feng Zhenyu speak. The green-haired guy admitted he heard that the Feng family was cultivated before the change. Another student stood behind him and said in a puzzled tone, the guy who was surrounded by these people looked like Zhu Han who was eaten by a toad. Another guy next to him with a darker shade of hair said with his mouth wide open in surprise that Feng Zhenyu had moved up the list of candidates, but Zhu Han was in trouble. They watched this situation in shock through the backs of the students standing in front. Feng Zhenyu said with a grin at this time, so as not to call the Feng family bandits, he will give him a chance. He smiled smugly, frowning. The assistant behind him frowned and pursed his lips, looking forward. At this time, Feng Zhenyu was reminded by Zhu Han of the day when he was eaten by a toad. He said let him tell honestly what happened to him. He added that he would forget about the hand and not kill him. He put his other hand in his pocket and continued to hold the broken one on the tripod so as not to harm it in any way in the future. Zhu Han put his hand forward, curling up a few fingers, and mockingly said that he was talking too much. He exclaimed smugly that he was not his pawn some time later. A stout man in a suit suit touched one of the schoolchildren on the shoulder and asked what was going on here. The man with stubble on his face exclaimed demandingly that he wanted an explanation. Feng Zhenyu turned back in surprise, casting a sidelong glance at the man. The student whose shoulder was touched by the man looked at him in fear. The man was wearing square glasses. He asked the question displeasedly, did they not know that schoolchildren were prohibited from fighting within the school? The man continued to hold on to the student's shoulder. Another student with blonde hair and green eyes looked at him in shock, his mouth open in surprise. Old man Lai leaned on his crutches and closed his eyes exhaustedly, exclaiming indignantly that he was just some kind of teacher. He added that he should not interfere in other people's business or he would beat him up. A man with stubble and a beard hanging from his chin grumpily explained that school discipline must be enforced and violators would be severely punished. He added that it was written in the school rules. He looked ahead indignantly. His glasses reflected the blue sky without showing his eyes. The man at this time turned to Streak Lai and said angrily, judging by his age, he is not a disciple. He added angrily, let him hurry up and leave here. Old man Lai leaned on his crutches in shock and opened his mouth in surprise, not expecting to hear such a thing. The man in the blazer raised his head, showing through his glasses his one eye, which had a red tint, and said that either he would call the guards right away. There was a lot of anger and rage coming from him. Old man Lai indignantly raised the crutch up, and he put the other one to the throat of the man in the pantsuit and asked him a question, calling him a moron, will he call the guards? Old man Lai was almost jumping on his broken legs from the anger overwhelming him. He turned to the man again, calling him stupid, and asked the question, does he say similar things to him? Old man Lai continued to jump angrily and exclaimed indignantly that he was in charge here. He added that he should just die. The man looked at him with a tinge of pity. He didn't say anything. Veins appeared on old man Lai's face. Suddenly, something crashed into old man Lai's torso with great force. This blow next to the old man's body acquired a golden color with a yellow tint. The blow pushed old man Lai back. He tried to hold on with the crutches in his hands. The man in the pantsuit kicked old man Lai in the stomach and said without any emotion that he was too noisy. His blow was powerful and very strong. Old man Lai bounced a long distance, continuing to fly closer and closer to the blue sky, on which cumulus clouds floated by. He dropped his crutches, which began to fall down. The powerful blow from the man in the pantsuit sent his aura emanating in all directions. A moment later, old man Lai fell backwards onto the asphalt. He lifelessly spread his arms to the sides, and his beard fell over his mouth. One of the students exclaimed, saying that the teacher put him in his place with a simple kick. Old man Lai still continued to lie on the asphalt, not moving at all. The blonde-haired student confirmed the other student's statement and exclaimed, he heard that the new teacher is very strong. The teacher continued to stand in place, frowning. He pursed his lips in displeasure. One of the students carefully examined the teacher and suggested that Sei had reached the level of a master. Zhu Han grinned and looked forward thinking that China was hiding such strong people. He looked forward confidently and without a doubt thought that this teacher Sei was one of the strongest. 
At this time, Say looked at all the students present near the school and told them not to follow his example because he was an unorganized person and had no discipline. He put his hands in his pockets and said let them be positive and motivated students. The students looked at him with their mouths open in surprise. Say at this time added that they should not fight or kill. He explained that students should live together. Teacher Say added that if everything is clear to them, then they can disperse. Feng Zhenyu gritted his teeth and looked ahead with excitement. Sweat ran down his face from the emotions that arose in him. One of his assistants opened his mouth in shock, looking forward at Teacher Say. Say began to turn around and walk away towards the school. Feng Zhenyu shouted angrily at him to wait. Say at this time watched the retreating students. Suddenly he turned around and asked in surprise something else. The sunlight reflected brightly from his glasses. Feng Zhenyu confidently stood in place and said, Since students cannot break the rules, he wants to challenge Zhu Han to a fight in the arena. He looked forward confidently, frowning slightly. His assistants continued to stand behind him, awaiting his further instructions. Feng Zhenyu frowned angrily and clenched his teeth, mentally cursing. He mentally added, he doesn't know where this teacher came from. He added that even his elder is not his opponent. Feng Zhenyu angrily asked Zhu Han standing in front of him, does he accept his challenge and what about it? He looked forward demandingly and exclaimed, if he admits that he is a coward, then he will let him go. Zhu Han stood still. A bead of sweat ran down him from uncertainty. Feng Zhenyu smiled smugly, revealing his snow-white teeth, and mentally addressed Zhu Han, saying that he would make him suffer. He mentally added, to his regret, he will die in this battle. His face acquired a strange bluish tint from anger and confidence in his plans. Roman Eleven looked at Zhu Han, who was standing there grinning, and said, if you follow the rules of the challenge, then he can simply reject it. He held his hand out to the side as he explained this. Zhu Han put his hands in his pockets while continuing to look forward. Feng Zhenyu tensed when he heard this. He gritted his teeth in shock and looked forward. Teacher Say added at this time that no one could stop him from doing this. Feng Zhenyu pointed his hand at the dog waist and turned to Zhu Han, saying that if he is afraid, then let him fall to his knees and apologize in tears. He doubtfully said that he would then allow him not to accept this challenge. He raised his eyebrows with excitement and asked the question, How about this? Sweat ran down his face from uncertainty. Zhu Ran put his hand to his face, and his eye began to glow with a strange yellow light. Strange symbols appeared in the iris of the eye. He said, turning to Feng Zhen to challenge, they need a bet. He continued to press his hand over his eye, from which the golden threads of his aura emanated, and asked the question, would he dare to challenge him? Zhu Han clenched his other hand in a superior move. Feng Zhenyu opened his mouth in shock and asked a question, does he want to place a bet? He asked who is against it. What is he going to deliver? Feng Zhenyu looked at him carefully, a little shocked by the question. Zhu Han extended his hand upward and said with a grin, his bet would be the magical treasure. He looked forward with a satisfied sparkle in his eyes. He remembered a long blue staff with purple stones on the sides. Zhu Han spoke, explaining to Feng Zhen that this was a crystal staff. He caustically asked him whether he would risk betting on it. He exclaimed, if he wins, Feng Zhenyu will give him the magic staff. Zhu Han immediately added, if he loses, he will give him the Feng family's treasure. Feng Zhenyu gritted his teeth furiously, mentally asking the question, how did this idiot know about the Feng family's treasure? He looked forward angrily and began to reason in his mind. Outsiders only know that the Feng family has a strong treasure and no more details. He mentally asked the question, how did Zhu Han know about everything in such detail? Zhu Han at this time pointed his finger down and said, if the frightened Feng Zhenyu cannot accept the bet, then let him simply fall to his knees and call him grandfather. He grinned, and this caused a bright blush to appear on his cheeks and said, he would allow him not to accept this bet then. He stood arrogantly in place, looking at Feng Zhenyu standing in front of him. Feng Zhenyu indignantly put his fist forward and exclaimed that this was a lie. He dissatisfiedly asked the question, who is not accepting the bet? He immediately began waving his fist to the sides and shouted that he would regret his words. Feng Zhenyu angrily added that he didn't care about some kind of magic staff. Zhu Han clasped his fingers together in a gesture of agreement with his words. He grinned and glanced to the side. Zhu Han looked at Master Roman Eleven and told him that they had agreed on the rates between them. He asked him to witness it. Teacher Roman Eleven crossed his arms over his chest as he looked at Zhu Han standing in front of him. Feng Zhenyu watched Teacher Roman Eleven and Zhu Han closely. 
Teacher Say put his hands together in a gesture of agreement and said that he would witness the bet between them. He still continued to cross his arms over his chest. His gaze was not clearly visible due to the reflective glasses he was wearing. Some time later, at a sports stadium, this consisted of slabs and solid clear glass. The stadium was surrounded by cherry blossom trees. The branches were brightly decorated with beautiful pink and white flowers. Rays from the sun reflected from the glass walls of the sports stadium. Meanwhile, inside this building, outside of this, there were many people watching Zhu Han and Feng Zhenyu standing in the middle. Above them at the top was a scoreboard indicating the points obtained from excellent attacks by the enemy in sparring. In addition, the time was depicted on the tablet. Someone's voice rang out from the spacious hall of the sports stadium and said that Feng Zhenyu was from a strong hidden family. The same voice explained that he began cultivating from a young age. He added that Zhu Han was far away in strength from him. One of the disciples with a dark haircut exclaimed, looking forward in admiration, he hopes that Feng Zhenyu will beat this idiot to death. Another guy standing next to him had a lighter shade of hair and said admiringly, if you look at Feng Zhenyu's strength, he advised Zhu Han to give up. Many other students also watched the upcoming battle with enthusiasm. One of the guys took out his phone and, holding it up, began filming. With an enthusiastic smile, he said that he would launch a live broadcast. He added that this fight will make him popular. Many other students looked over each other's shoulders in surprise. Zhu Han pointed his finger at Feng Zhenya and said skeptically that he was here. He added mockingly that his stake was a magical staff. He assumed and asked the question, did he not take it? Suddenly, he touched his chest with his hand and made a caustic remark, asking the question, What kind of arrogance is this? He asked, Does he still think he will win? Feng Zhenyu asked a question, Or does he think that the Feng family does not keep their promises? There was a poster in the sports stadium that showed a girl in a purple kimono. Behind her stood a guy in a yellow kimono and looked to the side with a grin. Zhu Han frowned in confusion and said that this was nonsense. He admitted he thought he wouldn't keep his promise. Zuhan said with displeasure and despair that he should act faster. He added that until he sees the staff, the battle will not begin. Feng Zhenyu exhaled furiously, here he is. Out of anger, he did not finish his thought, his mouth open in shock with indignation. Feng Zhenyu frowned angrily as he looked at him. After a moment, he put his hand to his forehead and, gritting his teeth, agreed, answering, okay. He said that he would immediately send people after him. He said he wouldn't beat him that quickly. Feng Zhenyu exclaimed, before he even has time to react, his surname will not be Feng. He pressed his palm to his forehead doomedly, frowning his eyebrows even more. Zhu Han waved his hand away, telling him to do what he wanted and just not interfere with him. Feng Zhenyu angrily clenched his fist and began to swing it at Zhu Han, who was motionless and standing still. He called him an idiot and shouted that he would drink all this arrogance out of him. Feng Zhenyu exhaled angrily and began to run straight forward. Teacher Say sat behind the stands and held a glass of liquid in his hands. He put his glass aside and coughed, drawing attention to himself. Feng Zhenyu at this time ran at full speed towards Zhu Han to attack him. Zhu Han turned to the teacher and listened to him carefully. Say said at this time that before the start of the fight, he would remind them that they should not break school rules. Feng Zhenyu puffed out his cheeks offendedly and, showing his fist to Zhu Han, shouted that this freak was lucky and would live a couple of minutes longer. Zhu Han smiled shyly, putting his hands in his pockets. He glanced sideways at him, filled with awkwardness. Some time later, the door opened noisily, letting sunlight into the room. Twenty minutes passed. One of the students turned in surprise towards the open door and asked the question, what happened? The other students gaped in shock as they looked behind them. The students explained, looking at the open doors, that it was the head of the Feng family who had come and the creator of the biology corporation. Kung Shi walked last, proudly raising his head. He walked with a confident gait behind Lu Yunzi, Feng Zhen, and a guy with red hair who looked a lot like Long Bao Tian. The disciples' voice added that Lu Yunzi and her family had also arrived. Someone dumbfoundedly asked why the three strongest cultivator families were gathered here, Feng Zhen was holding a staff that was shining brightly. Someone asked a question, he still didn't know where it was. He exclaimed, clarifying that the location of the ninth branch tree was still unknown. Zhu Han looked at the front door dumbfounded and remained silent. Feng Zhen Yu also stood still, looking ahead in shock. This voice exclaimed, all the strongest families want to get information about him. Someone said to look, Zhu Han was really in danger now. 
This teacher frowned and sat in the stands, saying nothing. Feng Zhenyu asked, Now that the crystal staff is here, can they start? He stood in a relaxed position and asked the question, Is this correct? Zhu Han smiled smugly as he looked ahead and exclaimed that he had one last condition. Feng Zhenyu gritted his teeth angrily and said that he was still talking. He exclaimed angrily that he needed more. Zhu Han pointed his finger at Feng Zhen and demanded that they give the crystal staff to the teacher. He was afraid that they might do something. Feng Zhen crossed his arms over his chest in dissatisfaction, continuing to hold the staff. Feng Zhenyu clenched his fist angrily and shouted through his teeth that he was a freak. He asked furiously, how could the Feng family's magical treasure be given to another person for safekeeping? He shouted that he refused. He tensed his whole body from the intense rage that arose within him. Feng Zhen calmly handed the crystal staff to the teacher and said that he did not mind because the treasure would be temporarily transferred for safekeeping. He handed it to Master Sei, who watched him without any emotion. Feng Zhen smiled arrogantly and said to Feng Zhen, he and Zhu Han are in the ring, so just let him beat him up. He advised him to hurry up and win. Feng Zhen lowered the crystal staff down and said that Zhu Han was needed by their family. He added, let him read that this is a guest. Feng Zhenyu frowned and pursed his lips, looking forward. He grinned and glanced sideways, thinking that Feng Zhenyu's level was almost at the late stage of foundation structure. Feng Zhenyu continued to think further that Zhu Han was just an inexperienced guy who had awakened after the change compared to him. Next to him, his aura branched out in all directions, having a strange pink-red hue. Feng Zhen looked forward smugly and thought, either way, they are going to win and take the staff back. The most important thing for him was that after the victory, they would send troops to the ninth branch tree. Teacher Sei took the crystal staff in his hands. It shone brightly in his hands, shimmering with different colors. In particular, the purple stones that were in the handle of the staff had a beautiful and rich color. Teacher Say squeezed tightly and said, If all the problems are settled, then he announces at the beginning of the fight. Suddenly, the tripod holding Feng Zhenyu's breaking arm fell onto the varnished floor of the stadium. Following this, the plaster cast removed from the arm flew off. It had cracked into many small particles and was lying on the floor next to Feng Zhenyu's feet. Feng Zhenyu raised his broken arm, from which a red glow was emanating, and said with a threat in his voice that he would now break both of his legs and then slowly torture him. Moving his other hand to the side, he looked forward arrogantly. Suddenly, his hand glowed an even brighter red, and closer to the middle, it had a dazzling yellow light with a whitish tint. He began to swing his arm and ran forward as fast as he could. Feng Jinyu's arms were covered almost to the elbows with red stripes that looked like gloves. He exclaimed angrily before he died, he would show him the Feng family's secret technique. Feng Zhenyu clenched his fists tightly, steam emanating from them, and frowned, trying to concentrate on the further battle. The student who started the live broadcast enthusiastically asked the question, Is this Tian Lu's fist? The other students behind him opened their mouths in shock, not expecting to see such a thing. The guy broadcasting the live broadcast said that this was the Feng family's secret technique. He heard that it is incredibly powerful. The flash of the phone brightly illuminated everything ahead. Liu Yunzi sat in the stands and crossed her arms and said that Feng Jinyu had already learned Qian Lu's fist. She said it was a sinister technique that could silently kill a person without leaving any damage. She carefully watched the battle in the sports stadium. Feng Jinyu, surrounded by his red aura, ran towards Zhu Han at full speed, swinging his red fists. Liu Yunzi continued to explain that cultivators usually only use this technique to kill. She assumed that Zhu Han was finished. Feng Zhenyu's aura shone brightly. Sparks flew in all directions. The guy broadcasting the live broadcast asked a question, Why is Zhu Han not moving? He guessed he was scared to death. Another student next to him gaped in shock. The guy broadcasting the live broadcast said with pity what a loss. He exclaimed that death immediately after awakening. Zhu Han actually remained standing in place with his arms outstretched. Feng Zhenyu hit him in the stomach with all his strength. From them, Feng Zhenyu's powerful aura began to spread in huge waves. Zhu Han remained standing in place and thought that the mystical iron body was simply absorbing all the damage. He was not afraid of this blow. Zhu Han put his hands even further to the side and clenched his teeth under intense tension. Feng Zhenyu still continued to hold his hand on his chest, from which a red glow emanated in all directions. Zhu Han clenched his fists. Next to them, their energy spread in all directions in zigs-shaped threads. 
Feng Jinyu looked at him warily. Zhu Han thought at this time, the most unpleasant thing was that this only improves in real battles. Feng Jinyu jumped to the side, clenching his teeth angrily. He asked the question with misunderstanding, how is this possible? He asked why his body was so strong. Threads of his red aura followed his body. He tried to stay on his feet. Feng Jinyu slowed down with his patent leather shoes on the floor of the sports stadium. This gave rise to an unpleasant, ear-piercing sound. One of the students from the stands exclaimed, What a strong body. The same voice asked, Was Zhu Han really a defensive type? Another of the students, dumbfounded, asked a question. Maybe he couldn't withstand Master Feng's blow and will soon fall. Feng Jinyu frowned and opened his mouth indignantly. He glanced sideways without saying anything. Suddenly, after a moment, he said with a grin to Zhu Han and exclaimed, Even if he has strong armor, it doesn't matter. He added that he could not withstand the force of his technique. Feng Jinyu looked forward smugly and exclaimed that now he would see the secret of the Tian Lu Fist technique. Suddenly, many small attacks began to fly into Zhu Han's body, covering almost his entire body. He opened his mouth in shock and exclaimed with a guess, so this is how it works. Each such attack was accompanied by a very noticeable sound. His clothes began to light up with small fires. Zhu Han looked at his palm, which he put forward, and thought that this was an interesting way to harm a person. He looked at his palm in admiration and thought, obviously, this dirty technique is just right for the Feng family. His school jacket was missing in many places. Smoke continued to emanate from him in all directions because the fabric of his clothing had not completely cooled down after burning from the fire. Feng Jinyu laughed and, looking caustically forward, said, The secret of Qian Lu's fist destroys all the meridians. He looked forward triumphantly, smiling openly and sincerely. Feng Jinyu called him a freak and said that he would now be disabled. Zhu Han's eyes turned dark with anger. His clothes, after being hit by Feng Jinyu, were severely singed right down to his skin. Severe red burns appeared on his skin, from which smoke and an unpleasant odor still continued to emanate. Feng Jinyu began to swing his fist again, next to which his aura branched out into red threads. He exclaimed that this was still not the end. He added that he would break his legs now. A bright aura continued to emanate from him in all directions, indicating his power. Feng Jinyu wanted him to kneel down. Zhu Han remained standing in place, not moving at all. Feng Zhen thoughtfully rubbed his chin with two fingers and said, Looking forward, let them look. His son has already comprehended Tian Lu's fist. He proudly exclaimed that the fight was ending. Zhu Han suddenly caught Feng Zhen's fist approaching him. He twisted his arm and threw him onto his back, starting to hold his chest with his other hand. Zhu Han said gloatingly that he was naive. He continued to firmly hold Fong Zhenya, who had fallen to the floor. The aura began to spread in all directions, but it had already lost all the power that it had before. Fong Zhen exclaimed indignantly, What? He added that this is impossible. He tensed up, sitting on the turbines, and looked ahead in shock, his eyes wide. Lu Yunzi exclaimed in surprise and disbelief, straightening her back that Tian Lu's fist didn't even scratch him. Kung Shi thoughtfully looked down and said that this freak cannot be judged by his appearance. He exclaimed thoughtfully, the day his arm broke was not just luck. He carefully examined his arms, which he crossed over his chest. Feng Jinyu rose to his hands and closed one eye. He asked the question, how could this happen? He exclaimed that this was impossible. Sweat ran down his face from extreme fatigue and his veins bulged on his forehead and cheeks. The floor he was lying on was all cracked in the sports stadium. Feng Jinyu began to get up, trying not to step on the cracks among the broken floor, and exclaimed, Tian Lu's fist seemed to explode in his body. He rubbed his hand over his chest and looked puzzled at Zhu Han standing in front of him, who casually put his hands in his pockets. Feng Zhen jumped up from the stands in fear and shouted to Feng Zhen that this freak's body looked strong. He exclaimed, spreading his arms out to the sides in worry. His strength didn't even change after his blow. Feng Jinyu turned around with a look of confidence, clenched his teeth, and listened to his father's words. Feng Jin shouted at him not to hold back and use the Feng family's secret pill. He added that he should put him in his place. Feng Jin turned back to Zhu Han and told him that he forced him to do this. He touched his hand to the tie in which he hid the golden pill. Feng Zhenyu began to bring the pill to his mouth and exclaimed, Zhu Han will regret that he was born. One of the students shouted that the Feng family was very rude. They asked the question, waving their fists angrily, hasn't he already lost? 
another disciple exclaimed, he heard that the Tianlu pill could boost his level for a short period of time. He added that it was a forbidden level-up pill. The other students continued to wave their fists indignantly and shout various curses towards the battle between Zhu Han and Feng Jianyu. The student who was broadcasting live exhaled in fear and agreed, saying that this was a violation of the rules. Everyone looked ahead in shock. Feng Jian touched his neck with his hand and explained that the Feng family pill was a hidden treasure. Thick red threads of his aura followed him, and he said that the pill had already taken effect. Feng Jinyu said, let Zhu Han already believe that he has reached the peak of foundation structure. He powerfully spread his arms to the sides and exclaimed that this feeling of power is so pleasant. Feng Jian turned to him, clenching his teeth with excitement, and advised him not to waste his time. He muttered through his teeth that he would beat him up, and then they would drag him to their home for interrogation. Feng Jinyu stood thoughtfully in place. He thought that he should hurry up, because Chan Lu's pill is strong, but not long-lasting. He mentally added that the side effect of the end of time was very unpleasant. Next to him were many different threads of different colors, which were twisted in every possible way next to him. The entire space darkened and turned burgundy violet. Lightning flashed in the air. A huge bloody hand with large claws hovered high above Feng Zhenyu and Zhu Han. Feng Zhenyu stood in the center of the stadium and raised both hands up in triumph. He said threateningly that Zhu Han was just an ant to him now. Zhu Han stood opposite and looked at him boldly. Lu Yunzi sat on the fan's seat, looked at what was happening with huge eyes in shock, and thought that the power of Qian Lu's pill was simply incredible. Even the pressure from the aura was very strong. The power of these bloody hands is very frightening. Kung Shi looked in shock and thought that this power is frightening, now Feng Zhenyu's aura is too strong. Zhu Han stood calmly with his hands in his pockets and looked up at the huge bloody hands with large claws slowly approaching him. He thought that the Tian Lu pill contained a huge amount of spiritual energy. This will harm Feng Zhenyu's body because he has mixed evil energy into his body. Zhu Han looked on gloatingly and thought that he had a gift for Feng Zhenyu. Zhu Han looked up and smiled in anticipation. The dark-haired classmate was holding his cell phone and filming. He said in shock that this was too much. Looking at this strength, one can immediately understand that Zhu Han will break all his bones. The blonde guy standing next to him said that he hoped Zhu Han could bear it. The last thing he wanted was to be beaten to death. Zhu Han looked at the blood-red aura and thought that he would not have been able to resist this power before, but now he has a nine-branch tree. He took out a magic tree and thought it was absorbing energy to grow. The magical tree glowed with a golden aura, which quickly grew and absorbed great spiritual power from the bloody hands at a high speed. Zhu Han watched in delight as the magical tree mixed its energy with Feng Jianyu's energy. Feng Jianyu exclaimed indignantly, What is this? He was just at the peak of his base structure. Feng Jianyu frowned indignantly and, covered in sweat, asked why he was getting weaker. Feng Jianyu resolutely accelerated his bloody hand attack towards Zhu Han and angrily declared that he didn't believe it. He furiously shouted for him to die. Zhu Han stood calmly and looked up at the hand with huge burgundy claws approaching him. He laughed maliciously and said let him continue. Zhu Han held his hand in front of him and happily said that he felt the nine-branched tree devouring this energy. The energy of the golden-colored magic tree and the energy of the burgundy-colored bloody hands merged into one. The magical tree absorbed it in wide streams. Feng Jinyu looked at this excitedly and said in disappointment that his attack did not harm him. He asked in bewilderment why Chan Lu's pill didn't work. Feng Jinyu became agitated and said that his energy had disappeared. He feels exhausted. Feng Jinyu asked in shock, what kind of tricks? Feng Zhen stood aside and looked at what was happening, dumbfounded. He thought excitedly that this was impossible, the Tian Lu pill was a hidden treasure. Feng Zhen asked in bewilderment, how did this energy disappear without a trace? Suddenly, Feng Zhenyu winced in pain and grabbed his head with his hand, saying bad. He fell to his knees, bent over the ground, and holding his head, screamed in pain. His head? How painful! Feng Zhenyu gritted his teeth irritably and, sweating with excitement, said that the side effect of the Qian Lu pill had already appeared. Zhu Han towered over the defeated Feng Zhenyu, who was exhaustedly holding his sore head with one hand and scratching the floor with his nails in despair with the other. Zhu Han looked at his torment and said that using the Tian Lu evil energy pill must be painful. 
Zhu Han touched Feng Zhenyu's head with his hand, glowing with a golden glow, and said that he would free him from pain. After a while, Feng Zhenyu lay down blissfully on his back and exhaled with relief. His headache disappeared. Zhu Han stood on the dais, raised his hand victoriously, and shouted that he had won. His classmates stood and looked at him in shock, their eyes wide open and their mouths agape. The dark-haired guy said in surprise that Zhu Han won so easily. This is amazing. Another, a guy with curly dark hair, said he must be very strong. Feng Zhenyu's performance was quite strange. He asked in surprise, is it because of the Tian Lu pill? Zhu Han, in dirty and shabby clothes, approached Teacher Roman Eleven and joyfully said that he had won this fight. According to the dispute, the crystal staff should be his. Teacher Say sat on a seat in the front row and held a purple-blue magical staff. He handed it to him and told him to hold it. The staff sparkled in his hand. A concerned Feng Zhenyu approached them and said that this staff was their family jewel. He asked the teacher to return it to him. Teacher Roman Eleven stood next to Zhu Han. They both turned in his direction in surprise and looked questioningly. Zhu Han asked hopefully, the head of the Feng family is not going to fool them. He looked at Zhu Han and angrily declared that he was a worthless puppy. The crystal staff was not some kind of toy for him. He gritted his teeth and said disdainfully that he didn't know how he defeated Feng Zhenya, but he clearly used something other than his own strength. Feng Zhen proudly announced that they, the Feng family, do not agree with the result of this fight. Zhu Han looked at him in surprise, smiled confidently, and turned to the teacher, saying that the Feng family wanted to break the promise. Zhu Han asked with a smile, what should they do? Teacher Sei looked ahead thoughtfully. After thinking, he showed off the sparkling staff and said that since both parties agreed to the terms, he officially declares that the crystal staff now belongs to student Zhu Han. This decision cannot be disputed. The teacher solemnly raised the staff in front of him, from which a magical glow emanated. Feng Zhen furrowed his eyebrows angrily and, pointing his finger towards Master Roman Eleven, asked who he was to decide for the Feng family. He threateningly ordered him to return the staff now. He is giving him one last chance. The teacher listened to him silently, without showing any emotion. Kung Shi sat on the spectator seat and watched them. Leaning forward, he indignantly said that Zhu Han was very naive to believe that through a duel, the magical treasure of the Feng family could be obtained. He asked irritably, Zhu Han is still counting on the teacher's support. It was ridiculous. A cultivator with red hair and two scars near his eye sat with his elbows on the back of the seat and his legs spread wide. He crossed his arms in front of him and mockingly said that the stupid boy thought that since he won the fight, they would give him the staff. The Feng family had already done a favor by not killing him. Lu Yunzi stood up from her seat worriedly and, crossing her arms across her chest, said displeasedly that he should not have hoped to receive this staff in the first place. She added with concern that he was now embroiled in this teacher dispute. She asked if they could solve this problem. Teacher Roman Eleven confidently handed the magic staff to Zhu Han and resolutely said that he was a witness to this dispute. According to the conditions and results of the duel, the Feng family has no right to regret and break their promise. Feng Zhen gritted his teeth angrily and watched as Zhu Han extended his hand towards the magic staff. A little more and it will be in his hand. Feng Zhen activated his spiritual power. Energy lightning of purple, blue, and pink colors shot out from his palm in a single stream. He extended his hand forward and launched an energy attack, shouting angrily that they were weaklings. He angrily asked the question, do they not understand human language? He asked, do they want to die? Teacher Roman Eleven exhaled dissatisfiedly, frowned, and looked at Feng Zhen fearlessly. He extended his hand with his index finger, from which a wave of blue energy stream struck. His spiritual power famously countered the energy of the head of the Feng family. Feng Zhen could not withstand such an onslaught and fell to the side defeated. One of the students, dumbfounded, asked the question, What? He asked again, What happened? He exclaimed in surprise, This is the head of the Feng family. The student asked again, Was he defeated by this new teacher? Teacher Sei stood still, frowning and squeezing his eyebrows. Another student on the left exclaimed enthusiastically, It turns out that their new teacher is so intimidating. Feng Zhen exhaustedly began to stretch his hand forward, as if he was trying to help himself get up in this way. He closed his eyes in pain and cursed through his teeth. He asked the teacher a question, looking up from the floor level, Is he even human? He exclaimed indignantly and in disbelief that this could not be, because he was an ordinary teacher. Zhu Han crossed his arms contentedly, holding the crystal staff in his hands, and thought that this was natural, because he was an unusual teacher. 
He looked at the teacher's back with delight and mentally thought that he was the number one teacher in the North. The crystal staff shimmered brightly in his hands, reflecting the sun's rays. Zuhan carefully looked at the teacher, who bowed his head slightly. He thought he used to be one of the driving forces of the government. He began to think further that Lai Kai Shan became their teacher for some purpose. Zhu Han looked closely at his clenched fists and thought that he instills fear in everyone who is able to sense the power of his aura. He began to think further, Lai Kai Shang made a huge contribution to the government by winning many fights. Feng Zhen tiredly lowered his head to the floor, no longer trying to look up. His whole body was shaking from extreme fatigue. Zhu Han thought that Feng Zhen did not understand how strong this man was. Lai Kai Shan stood with his hands in his pockets. Zhu Han thought that he mistook him for a simple teacher and got what he deserved. Lai Kai Shan adjusted his glasses with two fingers, moving them closer to the bridge of his nose. He furrowed his brows. Lai Kai Shang looked forward with a smug smile as he continued to adjust his glasses and said that he was the venerable Lai Kai Shang. The veins on his forehead were slightly swollen. The sun's rays illuminated parts of his clothes and face. Kung Shi stepped forward in shock and exclaimed with his mouth wide open that this couldn't be happening. He demanded a question, is this the same Lai Kai Shang? First master of the five southern provinces, Lu Yunzi stood up from the stands, as did the guy with red hair. Kung Shi joined his hands as a sign of respect and exclaimed enthusiastically, so it turns out that he is Mr. Pulse Lai Kai Shan. He bowed respectfully and greeted him. He introduced himself and explained that he was the creator of the biology corporation. He exclaimed, explaining that they had already met. Lai Kai Shang gave him an insignificant glance while turning his back. He immediately turned around and assumed an indifferent look. He didn't answer and pursed his lips. A moment later, Feng Zhen approached him, leaning on his assistance, and lowered his head down with exhaustion. Lai Kai Shang looked at him demandingly, raising his head arrogantly, and asked, Does he have anything to say? The assistants tightly clasped the back of Feng Zhen, who was tired after the battle. Feng Zhen at this time turned to him and asked him to forgive him for not recognizing his strength and attacking him. Sweat ran down his face from weakness. He looked up and sincerely said that he had nothing more to say. Feng Zhen gritted his teeth and began to mentally reason that he would remember this Lai Kai Shan. He thought angrily that he shouldn't joke with the Feng family. He looked forward with resentment and mentally asked the question, because of such a trifle, the crystal staff passed into the hands of this guy. Lai Kai Shang pointed his present finger at Zhu Han away from him and said, Since the head of the Feng family has nothing more to add, he declares Zhu Han the winner of this match. He immediately added that the crystal staff now belonged to him. The students standing next to the stands watched all this with curiosity and undisguised interest. Feng Zhen still continued to stand next to Lai Kai Shan, who was held with a confident grip by assistance, helping him to move. Lai Kai Shan turned to Zhu Han, turning his entire body towards him, and explained that this school has its own rules. He added that if anyone dares to get him into trouble, he should definitely tell him. Zhu Han listened to him carefully. After a moment, he put two fingers together in an agreement gesture and sincerely thanked the teacher. His eyes shone with happiness. He held the crystal staff behind his back, continuing to smile sincerely. Zhu Han looked at the teacher's back again and thought that Lai Kai Shang was a very famous person. He asked the question why they didn't recognize him earlier. All the school students looked closely at Lai Kai Shang, and their mouths were open in shock. Zhu Han thought that it would take a lot of effort to take away this crystal staff. Lai Kai Shang instructively raised his index finger up and, turning to the students, exclaimed that the fight was over. He added that they should all leave. Lai Kai Shang advised that they should think about what this match taught them. He immediately added that if they made a promise, then let them not break it. Feng Zhen leaned his hand against his chest and looked forward angrily. A very noticeable blush appeared on his face due to the rage rising strongly within him. The assistants next to him closed their mouths in displeasure, looking forward. Sweat ran down their faces from intense tension and excitement. Lai Kai Shan at this time exclaimed that in this way they would earn trust and their ancestors would be proud of them. Zhu Han looked enthusiastically at Lai Kai Shang, who put his hands in his trouser pockets after his motivational speech. Feng Zhen dissatisfiedly leaned his elbows on the assistant, helping him move, and looked at Lai Kai Shan with contempt. At this time, bright sun rays were breaking through from the transparent ceiling of the stadium, illuminating the space. Feng Zhen turned to Zhu Han and angrily shouted that he was invulnerable at school. He advised him to stay here forever. 
The assistant holding him raised his head arrogantly and looked at Zhu Han standing in front of them. Feng Zhen at this time began to move his legs as actively as possible and shouted for them to get out of here. Behind him walked Feng Zhen Yu, who was also leaning exhaustedly on his two assistants. Feng Zhen Yu turned to Feng Zhen and said indignantly that this rod had been their family's treasure for years. He raised his head and asked the question, how can he give it to this freak? Feng Zhen turned around and glared at him. The veins coming from his eyes appeared on his face due to his intense rage. Feng Zhen shouted for Feng Zhen Yu to shut up. He exclaimed angrily, he's had enough of disgracing their family. He exclaimed furiously that he would deal with him at home. Feng Zhen Yu looked at him in fear, without saying anything. Drops of sweat ran down his face from excitement and undisguised fear. Lu Yunzi, Kung Shi, and the red-haired guy walked down from the stands. Zhu Han turned around at this time and began to leave. The red-haired guy called out to him and shouted at him to stop. He asked the question, is it true that his name is Zhu Han? He asked him if he remembered him. Zhu Han barely noticeably turned his head towards him and looked at him with displeasure. He turned to the red-haired guy and, placing his hand on his chin, began to carefully examine him. Zhu Han tilted his head to the side, looking at him questioningly. He took a closer look at the face of the red-haired guy, who had noticeable bruises under his eyes due to lack of sleep. He saw his resemblance to Long Bao Qian. Zhu Han asked him a question, does he know Long Bao Qian? He exclaimed that they looked a little alike. The red-haired guy pointed to his hair and explained that they were not only similar, but they were born the same. He explained that Long Bao Qian was his twin brother. Zhu Han listened to him carefully. His jacket was soaked with blood at the wound site. Zhu Han suddenly realized and exclaimed that he remembered now. He slammed his fist into his palm and said, Long Bao Qian actually mentioned the genius Long Ao Tian. He placed the crystal staff on his hand and looked forward in surprise. Long Ao Tian extended his hand towards him and pointed his finger downwards, exclaiming that he should not dare to say the name of their elder brother. He exclaimed furiously that he would finish him off with one finger. Long Ao Tian asked him a question, smiling menacingly, as long as he is not with strangers, let him say why he killed Long Bao Tian. Zhu Han smirked, crossing his arms over his chest, and explained that this lousy man suddenly attacked him with missiles. The crystal staff in his hands shone brightly in the sunlight. Long Ao Tian smiled with feigned calmness and asked a question, did he kill one of their people? He noted skeptically that this was very bold. He asked the question, how many lives does he think he has? Long Ao Chan looked forward demandingly. With one hand, he reached into his coat pocket and exclaimed furiously through his teeth, Don't let him think that Lai Kai Shan can protect him. Orange sparks of aura emanated from him in all directions. He exclaimed, Let him remember, his name is Long Ao Chan. Zhu Han continued to stand in front of him, crossing his arms and holding the staff in his hands. He didn't say anything and didn't move at all. Long Ao Tian suddenly walked past him and made an obscene hand gesture and said that tomorrow he would transfer to this school. He exclaimed that this day would be the day of his death. Zhu Han looked at him with puzzlement. Lu Yunzi also followed Long Ao Tian with her gaze. She crossed her arms behind her back and asked, Is it really he who killed Long Bao Tian? Zhu Han frowned and looked at her out of the corner of his eye. He pursed his lips, not knowing what to say. Zhu Han turned sideways towards her and mentally thought that he had the Fong family's treasure, so his next target was the Long family. Lu Yunzi remembered the entire Long family and began to explain that among the three sons of the Long family, Bao Qian was the weakest. She immediately enthusiastically added that Ao Qian and Ling Tian were real geniuses. She remembered the powerful aura next to Ling Tian. Lu Yunzi began to explain further that Long Ling Chan had been cultivating in the Long family's cultivation room even before the world changed. She heard that because they absorbed the life-giving fruits, their strength is simply unfathomable now. Lu Yunzi said that he was not in the King Yan ranking, but if he had participated, he would definitely be on the list. She looked forward sadly. Zhu Han looked at her gratefully and smiled, thanking her for reminding her. He immediately said, in fact, he was looking forward to fighting the Long family. Lu Yunzi stood next to him and listened to him carefully. After a while, Zhu Han looked at the table next to the storage cabinets and noticed the sports uniform neatly folded into a pile. The sun's rays smoothly descended onto the table with things illuminating it. Zhu Han began to take off his burnt and blood-soaked jacket. His back was turned to Lu Yunzi, who was watching him closely. Kung Shi approached them and, turning to Zhu Han, said that he was lucky to survive this incident. 
He said that his victory over the Fong family was great. He put his hand on his chest with respect and said that he hoped that they would get along with him. His green cloak fluttered slightly with his every movement. Kung Shi asked the question, how about this? He made an offer by asking, will he bring him some fruits to cultivate for testing? His arm, completely covered in iron armor, shone brightly in the sunlight. Zhu Han put on a sports jacket and said that he didn't need it. He raised his hands up to adjust his jacket for a more comfortable position. Zhu Han said, he can completely destroy a person, leaving nothing left of him. He straightened the collar of his jacket with his palm and said that he would be afraid to enter his house. Kung Shi noted with a note of delight that he was really funny. He said that it was not as dangerous as the situation he found himself in today. Kung Shi looked forward confidently, grinning. Kung Shi put his hands out to the sides and said that he had already insulted the Feng and Long families. He added as he continued to raise his hands higher, they were considered one of the strongest cultivator families. Zhu Han got dressed and stood in front of him, holding a crystal staff in his hand. He looked carefully at Kung Shi, who had his arms outstretched, and exclaimed as he took steps forward, if it weren't for the school's protection, Zhu Han would have been dead. Kung Shi brought his iron palm closer to him and said calmly he appreciated it. He extended his hand forward and suggested to Zhu Han that he join biology and they would ensure his safety. Zhu Han looked to the side with ridicule and said that this was nonsense. He asked him a question, is he doing this not for his sake, but in order to get information about the nine-leaf lotus? He asked again if he was right. Zhu Han said caustically, he will only say two words. He said with hostility that he was trying in vain. Kung Shi angrily approached him and said through his teeth that he should listen to him because he couldn't handle it alone. Zhu Han remained standing in place without moving. He felt neither fear nor worry in front of Kung Shi. He immediately boldly declared that it was none of his business what he could handle and what he couldn't. He added that he was not interested in his worthless crush. He looked forward defiantly. Kung Shi opened his mouth in shock and said, He has already insulted the Fang and Long families. He asked the question, is he sure that he wants to make another enemy? His figure towered significantly next to Zhu Han. Kung Shi advised him to think twice. He said no one would dare to kill him at school, but they, the biology corporation, know many ways to kill. Lu Yunzi watched them tensely without saying anything. Zhu Han angrily asked him, who was he to threaten him? A threatening sparkle appeared in his eyes. Kung Shi opened his mouth in shock and raised his head in surprise. He could not find the right words and only mumbled a word. Kung Shi put his hand to his head, scratching his hair with his iron fingers, and said, Let him remember his words. If he ever falls into his hands, he will break all the bones in his body and burn him in a fiery pit. Kung Shi remembered Lai Kai Shang and continued to rub his hand over his head, his mouth open in shock. After a moment, he gritted his teeth and exclaimed, he will force him to tell him everything he knows about the nine-leaf lotus. Suddenly, a hand approached Kung Shi's cheek with great speed. A huge red mark was left on his cheek after being hit by Zhu Han, who came close to him. Kung Shi, not expecting this, lost his balance and fell with his other cheek down, hitting himself painfully. Zhu Han exclaimed angrily, he talks too much. Kung Shi gritted his teeth from the intense pain that appeared in his body. He landed on the floor with a loud sound. Zhu Han raised his palm and said with a grin to get out of here. He towered over Kung Shi smugly. Kung Shi suddenly jumped up from the floor and shouted furiously that he was finished. Behind him, fire began to spread abundantly from his body. He moved forward as fast as he could, gritting his teeth angrily. Suddenly, a hand touched Kung Shi's shoulder. Lu Yunzi turned to him and asked him not to forget what Mr. Lai Kai Shan said. She asked him not to break school rules. Lu Yunzi continued to hold his shoulder tightly, preventing him from moving further. Kung Shi frowned and cast a sidelong glance at her, gritting his teeth. Kung Shi cursed and rushed forward. He said menacingly, watch out. Zhu Han stood silently and listened as Lu Yunzi scolded him indignantly. She said that she simply had no words. On this island, her family is the only one he hasn't angered yet. Lu Yunzi stood behind him and looked at his back with displeasure. Kung Shi looked back with a malicious grin. He raised his index finger and said angrily that he forgot to tell him. He asked a question, Lion Shu is his friend, right? Zhu Han asked in surprise, is Lion Shu with him? What did he do with it? Kung Shi turned away with a satisfied smile and answered smugly over his shoulder, so far everything is fine with him, but he can't vouch for himself. Zhu Han stood motionless and looked at Kung Shi's back, holding a crystal staff in his hand. 
Kung Shi smugly announced that he would be waiting for him tomorrow at the entrance to Jinshi Canyon. He crossed his arms in front of him and added menacingly, if he doesn't come, let him prepare to take his corpse home. After everyone left, Lu Yunzi said with concern that Kung Shi was incredibly strong. Zhu Han turned around in surprise and looked at her face. She added that his reinforcements are even stronger. If Zhu Han goes there, then he will not have a chance against them. Zhu Han looked at her and thoughtfully rubbed his forehead with his index finger. He cheerfully told her not to worry about him. He is not so self-confident as to challenge biology alone. Zhu Han smiled and said, Don't try to dissuade him, he will still go there. Lu Yunzi looked at him with concern. He continued hesitantly, if possible, he would like to ask her family for help. She asked in surprise, the Lu family. Lu Yunzi said thoughtfully, if he needs her family's support, she will ask her father to listen to him. Lu Yunzi added whether he could save his comrade or not still depended on luck. Lu Yunzi stood opposite Zhu Han and crossed her arms over her chest and said that her family also had differences with biology. She added that the Lu family had already fought with them. Zhu Han raised his arm bent at the elbow with his palm facing forward and said that she had misunderstood him. Not only does he want to ask the Lu family for help, but he also wants to give them a big gift. She looked up at him in surprise, since Zhu Han was much taller, and asked the question, What is he talking about? Does he have something so valuable? Zhu Han turned around and headed towards the exit. He waved goodbye to her and said as he walked that he almost forgot. He still had some things to do. He will come later to talk to her family. Then, when Zhu Han had already approached the exit, holding the crystal staff in his hand, without turning around, he added that she should ask the head of the family to accept it. Without waiting for her answer, he confidently said thank you. Lu Yunzi was shocked by his impudence. She stood and looked after him. Lu Yunzi jumped up in frustration and ordered him to stop. She asked if he could explain in human terms. What is he trying to achieve? Seeing that he did not react in any way to her words, she angrily shouted that she did not agree to help him. A little while later, school studio, Zhu Han decisively opened the doors. He stood and looked around. Zhu Han remembered that in his previous life, he worked at this studio part-time until he graduated. Usually, no one comes into this room. This is an ideal place for training. The school studio is a small room in gray and blue colors. In the center, there was a podium for the announcer. Opposite this, there were several video cameras. At the top, there are spotlights attached to the ceiling for light. Zhu Han tenderly ran his fingers along the edges of the crystal staff and thought with regret, this is a wonderful treasure. This will have to be broken to get one of the five crystals. Zhu Han broke the crystal staff and took out a red crystal. Zhu Han sat on the floor in the lotus position, holding a red crystal in his fingers and thinking that he needed these crystals to create the perfect base. He did not know why or when this crystal was put into the staff. Zhu Han threw a red crystal into a bottle of sparkling liquid that already contained another pink crystal. He thought that along with the crystal he took from Bao Tian, he now had two of these. As far as he knows, the other three stones should be with the Lu, Long, and Biology families. Zhu Han took out a yellow bag, untied the red ties on it, and shook out the contents. He thought that these items were given to him by Long Bao Qian. These are all ordinary trinkets, but you can create something worthwhile out of them. In front of him on the floor were many different objects, such as swords, maces, fruits, and many others. Zhu Han decided that he could make a cauldron out of it. He extended his hand, palm up, and activated his spiritual energy. A white ball of energy, surrounded by blue rings, glowed above his palm. Zhu Han remembered that in his previous life, he was an alchemist without equal. He spread his arms to the sides, and an energetic blue glow spread over all the magical objects that lay on the floor. Zhu Han remembered that no one before him could create such a masterpiece. The heavenly elixir. Because of this, people called him the master of medicine. Zhu Han decided that he would now begin to use the highest technique, the art of battle forging, to create a cauldron. Zhu Han looked resolutely at his outstretched hand, from which a white glow emanated. He loudly cast the warforging art spell Meltdown. Zhu Han said that first, these items need to be melted. All objects began to melt, turning into something single. After a while, Zhu Han walked down the street. Bright sunlight fell on the sidewalk. Tall trees cast their crooked shadows. Zhu Han walked past the parked bicycle and heard the phone ringing. He thought it was strange, who could call him at such a time? Zhu Han picked up the phone and looked at the screen. Seeing the name on the screen, he said excitedly that it was Lao. She actually called, at the same time. King Bay University. 
Lao Er, wearing a pink silk dress, sat on top of a red suitcase. A stream ran quickly behind her. She was holding her red cell phone in her hand. Lao Er brought it to her ear and said hello. Zhu Han became excited when he heard her voice from the speaker of his phone. He shed tears of joy. Zhu Han wiped away a tear from his cheek with his index finger and asked how Lao Er was doing. She pressed the phone to her ear and replied that she was fine. She told him thank you for warning her to go to the mountain. Lao Er was fiddling with a red flower in her hand and sitting cross-legged on a suitcase. She said that she had joined Qingbei University and was now studying here. Zhu Han asked himself in surprise, did Lao Er join the best magic academy? Already? He assumed that she had met someone interesting there. Lao Er stood up, grabbed the handle of the suitcase, walked forward and rolled it behind her. She looked at the cultivator who stood on the water in the middle of the pond and raised a huge pillar of water up with the help of his spiritual power. Zhu Han was confident that Lao Er had surprised the staff and cultivators of the university and was immediately accepted. She is as elegant and gorgeous as ever. He must catch up with her as quickly as possible. She asked the question, who is he? Why did he call her that day? Zhu Han quickly figured out what to answer her. There was only one answer in his head that he had been reborn. Zhu Han excitedly touched his forehead with his fingers and thought with excitement that it was too early for her to know about his rebirth. He replied out loud that he should just know that his name was Zhu Han. He will also join Qingbei University soon, and then she will know everything. Lao Er heard footsteps behind her and looked back in surprise. She quickly said into the phone that it was okay, she would wait for him, and interrupted the conversation by pressing the end call button. Lao Er stretched out her hand to take her suitcase, but realized that someone had taken it. In front of her stood a gray-haired old man with a braided beard. He was wearing a red cloak with gold trim. There were tall guys on either side of them. The old man said affably, They have finally met Lao Er. He invited her to follow him. He would help carry her things. It was the director of King Bay University. Lauer said in surprise that she would feel uncomfortable if the director carried her bags. The director smiled good-naturedly and told her not to be embarrassed. She is the most talented first year he has ever met. He held her suitcase with one hand and added that he was lucky to have such a talented student. She can't imagine how many old codgers are jealous of him now. The director laughed cheerfully. Next to him stood the guys who frowned with displeasure as they watched them. One of them, a guy with red hair and pink glasses, worriedly asked a question, did the teacher take the wrong medicine today? He is so polite to a newbie. Another, a dark-haired guy, noted that he was right, the principal usually doesn't care about school affairs. A guy with red hair and pink glasses asked a question, has he changed so much that he decided to personally greet the first year? Then a dialogue began between them. Even if she is very good, the director should not carry her suitcases. He is a very respected person. Is it possible that this is his illegitimate daughter? But the director is already so old. Although, if you think about it, this is the only reasonable explanation for what is happening. After some time, when bright stars appeared in the dark sky and the edge of the moon could be seen from behind the tree, lights were burning in the windows of the beautiful and rich house of the Lu family. A dark figure stood in front of the gate. Lu Yunzi, wearing an elegant gold-colored dress, couldn't help but ask, Where is this Zhu Han? She peered impatiently into the darkness in front of her. Lu Yunzi thought that there were many cultivator families watching him right now. She anxiously asked herself, maybe he was in trouble again. A car drove up to the house and stopped. Zhu Han got out of the silver car. Lu Yunzi said with relief, here he is. As he approached, she opened the gate and said that she personally invited her father and the other masters of the Lu family to this meeting. Lu Yunzi looked at him puzzled and asked the question, what was he up to? She expressed hope that this was some kind of prank. Her father will kill her if that's the case. Zhu Han smiled and told her to calm down. He was not going to play a prank on her. Then he reminded them that he had already said that he had come to give them a gift. After some time, men sat in a brightly lit room with rich furnishings and looked sternly in front of them. The white-haired man thought, what is this Yunzi girl thinking? She's so excited. Zhu Han stood calmly in front of the members of the Lu family, who sat importantly in expensive and beautiful chairs and looked at him menacingly. The gray-haired man doubtfully asked himself, because of this student, Yunzi informed her father that Zhu Han had arrived. Zhu Han reported that his friend was kidnapped by a biology company. He came to ask the Lu family's heavenly master to help him save him. Lu Yunzi thought sadly that he didn't even bother to say hello properly. 
If you ask someone for help, they need to be polite. She crossed her arms over her chest with displeasure and looked at him offended. The gray-haired man said ominously that they only agreed to listen to him because he was Lu Yunzi's friend. But as soon as he entered the threshold, he began to repeat that he needed a heavenly master. He indignantly asked what he thought of himself. The head of the Lu family sat in a chair, leaning his elbows, and sternly announced that biology had hired many elite people to capture him. They even invited Chuan Tian Zhao, the number one in biology X Corporation. The head of the Lu family presented the image of a blonde guy wearing a black cloak with gold trim. Family head Lu continued that they had been at odds with this corporation for a long time. If their family helped Zhu Han, they would have to fight to the death with Biology X. He looked at him sternly and said that even if they won, the Lu family would suffer great losses from which they would never recover. He looked at Lu Yunzi and Zhu Han standing in front of him and added that he was asking for the Heavenly Master to be sent with him. The head of the Lu family asked a question, does he even know who the Heavenly Master is? Throughout the world, celestial masters are extremely rare, not to mention the Lu family. He said that there was not a single celestial master in the entire South Island. Zhu Han looked with interest at the head of the Lu family, who sat confidently in a chair, a golden glow emanating from him. Zhu Han knew that they had their own difficulties, but he wanted to guarantee the safety of his friend. Nothing should happen to him. That's why he needs the help of the Heavenly Master. Only he can resist Tian Zhao. He looked at the head of the Lu family and said, as far as he knows, the only celestial master of the South Island belongs to their family. He would like to borrow it to save a friend. The gray-haired man angrily jumped out of his chair and shouted that this was nonsense. He asked irritably, since when did the Lu family have a celestial master? They themselves are hearing about it for the first time. How can an outsider know this? He asked irritably, if the Lu family has a celestial master, why have they been losing to biology for so many years? He concluded that the answer was obvious. If they had it, they would destroy all their enemies. Lu Yunzi said displeasedly that he was right, stop talking nonsense. She asked irritably, asking since when did she have a celestial master in her family? She had never heard of such a thing. Zuhan confidently said that they need to ask Mr. Lu about this. The head of the family looked at him sternly and wondered where this guy came from. The gray-haired man abruptly stood up from his chair and asked the question with pretension, what does this mean? A man sitting next to him in a green vest said that Zhu Han was talking nonsense. The head of the Lu family remained thoughtfully silent. He then replied that Zhu Han was right. There really is a celestial master in the Lu family. 